I remember the first time we did India Pakistan uh, you were like how the hell is this going to work and I remember it going up all the way up to maybe 4.8 was the max we could and you know everything was bursting at the seams on that so I'm a huge formula 1 fan and to me any product you build is a formula 1 car you know ajit was a ceo back then uh, ajit mohan and you know he, he, we had this running joke where he would uh, run into me and say akash so 50 million right i said yeah ajit done <laughs> <laughs> i think i was as as low as i could be in my career and uh, knowing that you know i've and i was very passionate about startups but you know when you fail so many times right you lose hope right you're like i don't know why i'm doing this anymore i remember this one game where uh, it was a slow night I think it was like Punjab versus something, and Chris Gale went crazy, and I was I was uh, doing something else, and then I I just looked at the screen, and you know there was like some seven odd minutes. I was like, what is going on? Like, how are people coming on? And the magic was always, of course, for me. I'm a big Dhoni fan, so there is uh, Dhoni is like worth like four or five million concurrency, and he Dhoni comes to bat, boom, <laughs> done, yeah, incredible, uncanny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, these are you know real fans, and about a minute or later, hot star fans. <laughs> the curse of scale is that for maybe 3 or 4 days in a year when you have the scale when there is a big billion day or there is a india pakistan game only on those days like for that day it pushes you to really you know stretch your infrastructure yeah your you know how you engineer something my my key advice would be to always start with your customer and say why should your customer use your product we have three tenets right video must play ads must play monetize make money and then you know subscription came along at some point yeah you have to prepare to fail hmm. and and you know the more you do that the less you are going to bleed publicly this is the fun at i think of working at hotstar is that you have to really think of how is this going to work at scale yeah yeah people always say that oh you compete with you know netflix or amazon prime or you know whatever and i, I said actually we are competing with television hi uh, welcome to yet another episode of scaler pod and uh, today we have with us who need someone who needs no introduction akash from hotstar and uh, somebody like i think this was very much in demand people are asking to bring uh, akash from hotstar because i think gorav gave the talk on 25 million right. subscribers so uh, thank you for coming sure welcome thanks for having me uh, really excited i think you know it's uh, it's wonderful to be able to talk about what we do and uh, it's been a it's been a good journey right But, yeah let's dig into it Yes, yes, yes. So we'll dig into everything, especially about like you know, hot star shattering world records on live streaming and all. We'll get there. Right. Uh, but I'll start with the first question that I ask all my guests is uh, so like, and because I love asking this question because I get different answers because different people are at different stages of company, right? Early stage, late stage. Right. So for you, what does a general day look like as a CTO? uh it's evolved uh, as as you rightly pointed out uh, you know i i joke and i tell my team that i'm a full stack cto so i can fix cafeteria food and complex uh, architectural problems <laughs> as well uh but you know through my even my tenure at at and i've, I've led teams now for about 8 odd years now in this sort of cto capacity and every time the the day looks a little different right uh i think what really uh, caught me off guard about this role when i really, when i took it on not just hotstar and you know just this technical leadership was how much uh, attention uh, teams outside engineers require from you right so i end up spending a lot of time sometimes with my finance team or my legal team mm. uh, right or uh, my definitely my talent team i spend a lot of time with right. Uh, right but on a regular basis now i'd say i've gotten down to a routine where uh, I I allocate some time for myself to think and strategize just some quiet time for myself during the day and uh, I uh, stuck together uh, you know I try to uh, fa- you know pace out through the month let's say I want to make th- make sure I spend time with my people and uh, equally on technical conversations right so last year I would say a day would look like maybe uh, 40 or percent meetings uh, it could be a variety of things right i try to keep it down some days are days are more uh, intense than others uh, i have my quiet time where i think and i'm able to uh, you know ponder over or or chase down things that i want to do right and uh, the remainder i try to you know fill in with uh, one on ones or uh, if there are ad hoc things that come up sometimes there are fires and you cannot dive into that right uh, but that's what a day looks like these days how frequently do fires happen man uh fires uh, you know one of the first things I, i not not that much anymore thank god 
बट टिपिकली यू नो ऑलवेज द फर्स्ट पोर्ट ऑफ कॉल फॉर एनी लीडर आई थिंक एट लीस्ट फॉर मी हैज बीन दैट यू नो आई कम एन एंड माई माई फर्स्ट कपल ऑफ मंथ इज ऑलवेज बीन अबाउट हाउ नॉट टू बी अ फायर स्टेशन राइट राइट एंड नॉट सो मच एनी मोर आई थिंक यू नो वंस वंस द ग्रुप इज सेट एंड दे नो वॉट टू डू लार्जली अगेन यू नो एज अ लीडर यू वॉन्ट टू थ्रो योर सेल्फ यू एंड ऑफ थ्रोइंग योर सेल्फ इन प्लेस वेर देर इज इन लीडरशिप और असिस्टेंस इज रिक्वायर्ड राइट राइट but i've been fortunate now i have a strong team and you know pretty amazing leaders uh, so i i get to stay back and let them uh, drive for a change so a lot of fire sort out themselves also yes and i think we actively focus on why there is fire i think huh. the uh, fundamentally uh, attaching drama to something causes fire hmm so i believe that so a lot of things you know and, and uh, drama is caused by things that don't come along very often right so you say you do something so much right So it's like it's like bungee jumping right like uh, and i you know we don't go bungee jumping often but every time you do the anxiety is so high you're like oh my god that's technically a quote unquote fire yeah, right or you say you know what i'm going to bungee jump every week so you're like okay great you know and not to say that we cause fires every week but but we learn from yeah. our fires and you know there is a very strong uh, you know interestingly our our, our theme for the last six eight months has been so much on just improving opex uh, right and, and just making sure that why are we spending our times on things we do uh, and how to reduce this fire quotient of it but i think we've come a long way i don't have fires fires as such of course of course makes yeah. sense uh, so and i'll dig deeper into like uh, how how all of this is also built like yeah, you know absolutely. like like uh, but but before that would like to know a little bit about your journey before hotstar as well uh, so sure how, how far back you... do you want me to go uh <laughs> I can go back college days maybe or like sure so so i grew up in pune uh i uh i did my engineering from garment college in pune uh amazing ride i worked for a year uh, you know i bombed in my gre uh so <laughs> I ended up i said okay i'll give it again i bombed further and i gave it again but i worked for a year in pune amazing uh, that really molded me i i think it was really good for me i didn't uh, start off thinking that you know i thought it was a compromise but i i cannot tell you how much it molded my who i am today right so very fundamental uh, one year and uh, i did my masters uh, from arizona state university so spent two years there in uh, phoenix uh, and uh, then moved to the bay area uh, you know and it was interesting because uh, you know uh, and, uh, through my career i've always uh, felt that okay this is my dream college this is my dream job and i've i've managed to get it and then only to have an alternative that i said okay, okay what if i take this fork instead right like you know I always wanted to work for Oracle because I like I'm, I obsess about databases, right? That's like a passion for me. So I said, oh, I have to work in Oracle, right? Like this is I'm talking about. Uh, I'm I'm going to date myself. This is uh, the 2000s, right? Like so, I graduated, finished my masters, then I got a job, and uh, you know, back then, and then an offer from another startup, then, and uh, you know, I didn't join Oracle because they didn't offer me any stocks. So I said, <laughs> said you know, did I did I clear an interview? Yes. was it any uh, different from they said we only give stocks to uh, ivy leaguers oh, no. so i said was my interview st- more simpler I said no you had the same bar i said then what gives nahi join karna so you know I, that's and and that decision then you know led me to my first startup which again shaped me in a major way right uh, this was uh, 2000 in the bay area you know went through bubbles you know we saw i saw like three layoffs and it was very traumatic uh, and i quickly learned that you know the only reason i got to keep my job and you know you saw a lot of really close friends uh, lose their ro- jobs right. uh, it was it was terrible actually that time and you know you talk about loss of innocence and growing up and i think that certainly was that phase for me the only reason i kept holding on to my job and this is something that i that really hit me was because i was versatile hmm. and it was purely because i was randomly curious right i said uh, i said okay we can uh, fire this guy because uh, let's let let's keep akash because uh, he can program some web Mm. along with the application server he does okay it's fine so you let the web person go right. so oh, let the you know we should let the it person go because I, akash can do it as well so i have done everything from my it to that and then you know you quickly uh, that really hit me saying oh damn like the only reason this is the only reason i have my job otherwise i'm just a statistic the like in versatility just because i'm curious i'm not even not not that i was good at it yeah, yeah. particularly but okay you can do it you possible uh, thing so that was that phase and uh, that was a bit of a low i remember jobs were hard to come by i bounced around a bit uh, went to another startup this was around 
uh, again uh, you know 911 and you know we we just passed that milestone oddly or that that event uh, and jobs are hard to come by i literally changed two jobs in between didn't you know one of my companies was founded by some saudi investor that went under then we said okay fine uh, and then that's when open table happened uh, right? i think i was as as low as i could be in my career and uh, knowing that you know i've uh, and i was very passionate about startups but you know when you fail so many times right you lose hope right you're like i don't know why i'm doing this anymore uh, so i got to that point and uh, you know open table happened open table was again uh, i had another offer parallelly then and this was in san francisco I always wanted to work in san francisco then uh, this was a small group you know typically those you know you have a whole day interview and spoke to everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. did the whole rigma role and then in the end i knew i had the job because you know i had the head of product come and pitch me so i said okay i have the role now yeah uh, and uh, back then it used to be uh, okay what how much money do you have in the bank hmm. what's your runway yeah what's your burn rate how do you make money this was the classical four questions which i'm sure people are asking these days as well again right like, this <laughs> is back in the same kind of correct way. so it's cyclical right so i remember like those were like the questions i asked him and uh, he said you know what we just charge a, a dollar to everybody we send to the restaurant i'm like you're kidding me right like this company is going to like bomb but again i've always uh, followed my heart versus my mind so you know i like the people i spoke to i said you know again sucker for passion so i said okay let me do that and then that was a great ride i was there for 12 years uh ended up you know the company went ipo so i was an early engineer there uh saw the ipo uh, and that's where that's really the place that i i saw success and then you said oh this is what it looks like and these are the things that make it work mm-hmm. so i was again a very foundational phase in my career and and that really you know sowed the seeds of sort of building that clarity right right previously people used to ask me what do you do so i said oh, i had this like 5 minute answer that i used to give mm-hmm. and i said okay fine <laughs> <laughs> but with open table it used to be like hey, what do you do so yeah we used to, we do online restaurant reservations done yeah yeah and i think you know uh, you look at it some of these things it's like uh, you know it's like reading a self help book right sometimes you read it and you're like like yeah, all this is obvious right or sometimes even religion potentially but like you you know you look at it and you say are ha yes ob- this is obvious so the simplicity bit, bit and doubling down on that became like a key lightning rod to me right right so open table happened uh, you know great run we got we had an ipo we got acquired by booking so i saw all of that you know it was wonderful uh, right had had an exit and it was super and uh, but during that time i decided to come back so 2007 i returned to india uh, you know and uh, set up the team here and uh, the returning was more of a personal angle or just like you were excited with tech in india or something it was a personal reason hmm. uh, again like i said you know I, i you know i i i attribute you know luck and destiny play a role uh, whether you believe totally in it or does, not totally does yeah right yeah, yeah. so uh, you know it was it was a a personal event that led to it and it uh, wasn't something pleasant but you know we were committed to coming back so we came back right and uh, i was fortunate enough at that time uh, you know my my mentor and my cto he said i so i quit and he said why are you quitting so i said you are a old school guy you don't believe in remote work so he said now i do so he said let's try it uh, you know for 6 months uh, i we like working with you and uh, let's see how it goes yeah yeah that's another technique that i followed in my career i like i i haven't you know i i like you know let me go do the thing that no one else is doing right so at that point you know uh, this is not something that's glamorous but you know we had internal systems mm. so these are basically uh, tools and these are enterprise level tools that you know almost 70 80% of the company is using yeah yeah now yeah. we are talking about uh, you know working with sales marketing ops yeah everything these people do right and it was all frankenstein together and having worked in the more glamorous quote unquote uh, you know the website part of it it's like yeah great you know i've done that so there's like hey there's no one who's doing this or wants to do it i said great okay i'll do it and again that journey sort of led to you know a lot of discovery and you know whole different growth uh, trajectory for me so that was also again uh, strategy of whether i've lucked into it or i've always said okay you know no work is you know people say hey uh, you know your work ethic is that no work is beneath you and i still carry that to the my team as well that if you know at any point you know let's say if you want me to do uh, you know you want me to code you want me to do testing you want me to you know write terraform scripts if that helps the organization at that point yeah, i do it it doesn't absolutely. matter right? right i don't care what your designation is 
so i think that that sort of ethic is very important to me and you know i, I definitely look for it in my leaders and i try to coach my team on it as well so i was open table uh, but i was back in india and uh, you know that journey was sort of i felt like you know i i knew i was not going to go back i knew the it was was i think 2010 around i didn't try to go back to where tiny all was but this was boom time right uh, i think this was uh, tiny all i don't know how many of you remember but it was like this one of the the ogs of the food aggregators yeah, yeah. uh, right and uh, i i love the product and you know that was the time that uh, you know i knew i was going to be in india and i i figured that if i want to be here i want to be a uh, break into the industry at uh, in india i said okay let's let's see what and i like tiny all i said okay cool i'll uh, come on board right i met saurabh and i had a wonderful conversation and said let's do this uh so i accepted when they were at the peak and then when i joined things were terrible right and there is uh, you know there is a lot of history with with tiny all and the way things went down yeah but you know at that point i figured again uh this is you know i don't know I, maybe uh, there is a bit of adversity junkie in me so i was like <laughs> you know how bad can it be right if i'm going to lead a team uh, for the first time i can't go lower than this <laughs> right? how how much lower can i take the group and I, i think taking that up and it was such a special time i think there are still a lot of uh, you know uh, there was a time members. when lots of startups in india were also starting like like people were like uh, that's confident true. that we can start something from scratch and build tech Absolutely. in india for fresh problems in true true so i was that period right so there was this feeling of gold rush and there was a feeling of uh, you know it, there was a lot of excitement right yeah. uh, there were like what five five founders if i recall correctly tiny all they were all not more than 24 23 so great very young uh lots of good energy right so it felt very much like the the you know the valley back when i started so i said this is great this is great energy uh but again we while we had a very rough period and you know swiggy was coming up and doing really well and you know yeah, yeah. Uh, i think the products solid dales doing a ridiculously good job there but you know i think we we did so many things back then which you know at at some point i i think yeah, what what if what could have been uh but wonderful team absolutely amazing engineering team uh, still uh, so many uh, of my engineers keep in touch and have come back to work with me also so i'm fortunate so you know that group is is solid but that lasted 7 months some of them came then from tiny all then runner and zomato so i worked with some of those people some yeah, of those people yeah, that's yeah. right we have a zomato thing uh, yeah. Uh, yeah we had a there was a brief dalliance where we uh, i think gunjan had come down we were like you know would they acquire us but yeah, yeah, yeah. that you know uh, didn't work through uh But well, that lasted seven months. Uh, I said, "Okay, fine. You know, turn the lights off." I remember the last few days. I was like, "You know, I'm just going to write unit tests and contribute to the <laughs> code base since there is nothing much to do." Uh, then I I figured, uh, you know, I I do uh, try my hand at e-commerce. I'd never done it, uh, so I said, "Okay." So then I had a gig with Craftsville for a bit. Uh, I was also very curious. Uh, got to do a lot of learning. Uh, that lasted seven months. So I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm on a streak here." I'm back to my uh, you know startup adversity days, but learned a lot. And interestingly, a connection made at Tiny Owl is how I got into Hotstar. Hmm. Uh, again, I was not looking, and you know, uh, I think Kraftsil was just winding up, and uh, someone at uh, Hotstar basically just called me, saying, "Hey, come talk to us," uh, you know. And I was like, "This uh, timing is like very uncanny." So he's like, "No, no, we know that this is happening, and I, someone who's worked with you before has vouched for you, so you should come and." talk to us right so i said you know this is a media company you know my experiences in product companies this yeah. is not doesn't seem like the right place for me right i said no please come we, we at least talk to us give us an opportunity right so i went uh, and uh, you know i met a whole bunch of people spent time with them again fell in love with the people uh, fell in love with the problem statement and again that group was so special uh, you know we were trying at that point uh, you know we had uh just the, the product we didn't have a product it was completely outsourced uh and yeah. we wanted to do this is like audacity I always point to this and uh, this is the thing that really got me going at hotstar is just the audacity of the leadership right so like yeah you know we we want to be a tech company that was i think a lot of your role right turning a media company into a tech company not me alone i won't take credit for it alone but i think the the seeds uh were there yeah right i think the intent was there and uh and and I, comp- and i will continuously say audacity because you know literally was like well why why do you, how can you be a tech company you are like no we will take on youtube we will take on prime we will take on netflix every of these all of these companies we will take on from india hmm so they okay how many engineers are in the room well very few 
so that's how we started but there was that will and that fire and uh, literally you know i mean that propelled us that sort of leadership and this like go big or go home yeah sort of thing and of course it's not all bravado right i think there's a lot of hard work uh, of course, that of course. consistently the team has put in and uh, you know it's it's been a great ride so and yeah here i am you know 5 plus years later uh, still kicking it <laughs> want to uh, you know double click a little bit into that as well like i think uh, mainly it was like star was like a media company and yes. then like i think accenture built a lot of the tech the uh, first iteration yes the first iteration that's right i think uh, in your company a lot of people still call it hot star one hot star two right that's that sort of a uh, i haven't heard that so you know when i joined uh, my my first brief was to create our own platform right uh-huh. the the original platform couldn't scale uh, of course uh, right it, it just couldn't because it was uh, it was interesting the whole architecture was based on like mysql and hmm. you know i i know the first uh, in 2017 uh, i think it, it was asia cup if i'm not mistaken interestingly and uh, you know for that game every india game the product would crash hmm and i literally spent i think two weeks with my engineers in office uh, fine tuning my sequel yeah <laughs> or or looking at you know hey this you know what are the what are the right buffer settings or the network settings on the yeah. servers to you know make sure the throughput works out very clear that you know that any we knew that that was not going to you know scale up for our ambitions right. and that's when uh, that was the year that you know i remember the first time we did india pakistan uh, <laughs> we were like how the hell is this going to work and I remember it going up all the way up to maybe 4.8 was the max we could and you know everything was bursting at the seams on that so we knew that that product would never serve us uh, but we were already on our way to kind of creating it and i i uh, I again you know I'm very mission led and uh, I'm a bit dramatic as well so I said you know I I I like a call to arms so uh, I codenamed the platform Rocky so that's what you know and I said you know like this is a it's a perfect underdog story yeah, if you've seen the movie yeah uh you know nobody expects uh, this person Rocky to do anything and you know he is pitted up against incredibly unsurmountable unsur- odds yeah so i said this is perfect right like i still have uh, you know rocky balboas uh, you know you've got a bunch of movie posters there so you'll you'll find a yoda poster in my office which is you know do or do not there is no try yeah and uh, there is a rocky poster which is which i really cherish uh, you know it is rocky kind of like you know punching the air in the end um, yes. but that's what really drove i i think that that vision and and just getting that group to think that we could do something was literally I I don't know how even now we managed to pull off the things we did. So how technically also challenging it is generally when you know like uh, when when you are moving to your own platform there are already millions of users. Yes. Uh, like the app was already out there are millions of people using that app uh, you know built outsourced and you are yes. sort of in housing it uh, h- how does that get done? It's a great journey I don't know how much I can share but I I'll, I'll try to keep it fun. Have you seen the movie Speed? Yeah yeah yeah. Right? The fundamental premise of speed is what? Uh, well, running the bus that time you have to. Like, that's right. So it's a great speed. metaphor. Yes. Right. There is this existing bus that has a bomb on it. Yeah. You can't run it below a certain speed, right? And your job is to move all the passengers safely to a safe bus, but it also must run at that same speed, right? What it does after that, it's fine. Hmm. But you have a like to like bus, right? And hmm. I think anyone who's done any kind of material migration will tell you that you want to at least start with. the two buses looking similar yeah right so pattern number 1 is you know find similarity do the least amount of work that you can do jump right and what we focused on really was saying what are the scale parts of the platform because we had to get ready i think we uh, probably had maybe 6 months to write everything from scratch so apps from scratch hmm. back end stack from scratch right everything from scratch and it is a big task as you can imagine again we had millions of customers even then yeah right uh, and to kind of do that shift so that by itself was a crazy journey and uh, you know I, uh, i can't get into the story too much but again you know no one really gave us the odds to succeed hmm. uh, and uh, it was good old basic engineering that we applied right and uh, you know i go back a lot of my engineering leaders around that time you know we had we had this whole spectacular architecture and uh, uh, you know it was very nice you know i, I think we are now potentially now of course we've rewritten our stack and 
uh, you know, we, we'll talk about it uh, increasingly now, but at least the Rocky stack had this lovely uh, microservices architecture, multi-tiered, right? Beautiful. Uh, and I remember one of my leaders coming to me and saying that, uh, you know, Akash, we just don't have enough engineers. We have fewer engineers than the microservices you want to write. And, uh, and I said, yes. Uh, and, and, you know, we started to create the layers and we said, what is this layer really doing? Yeah. It's only delegating calls to the lower layer. So why are we doing it? I think a lot of those questions were asked and we, we said, yeah, take it off. Hmm. Right. You're a, you know, we were talking earlier, Arnav, you're a Formula One fan. So I'm a huge Formula One fan. Yeah. Right. And uh, to me and any product you build is a Formula One car. Right. Right. So I, and I'm a big fan of exploiting the data, the conditions that you are in. Right. I knew what we were going to be up against. I should, I shouldn't say I knew what I was going to be up against, but we said, well, at least maybe, you know, we were getting ready for IPL at that point. We said maybe 5 million people will show up because that's, that's how many people showed up for India, Pakistan, right? Uh -huh. So at least that much, at least that much. Uh, you know, Ajit was a CEO back then, uh, Ajit Mohan. And, you know, he, he, we had this running joke where, uh, he'd uh, run into me and say, Akash, so 50 million, right? I said, yeah, Ajit, done. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it was funny because he would eventually, uh, you know, inevitably run into one of my leaders uh, on the floor and uh, you say, hey, how's it going? And, uh, you know, and, and this person, at that time, we could barely crack a million even on the platform, right? Right. And uh, they used to be like, damn, Ajit. So they, they, they would not have a solid answer. And he should turn around and come to my office and say, hey, I was just talking to this person. And uh, you know, he was saying, Do you, we have a ways to go. I said, got it. Right. And again, you know, I think for a, for an engineering leader to have that sort of uh, backing, hmm. I think this is where the audacity comes in and, and, the, and the, the backing to fail. Yeah. I think that was huge for us. And I think that really enabled us. Uh, but we didn't know what, what we were getting ready for. But we said, OK, I said, you know, this is like one, a Formula One car. What are the key parts that we need to crack? What are the parts that we can do later? And uh, we started by saying the catalog is not going to see that level of scale. But everything else, which is the entitlement, authentication, all of that bits, those we will own. Yeah. Everything that the customer is going to bank, we will own. Yeah. And we started to focus on that. We also said that I, I took a strategy of saying, you know, back then there wasn't, uh, we are talking early 2018, there wasn't much state of the art in terms of how do you actually generate that level of scale and test the platform. I was also very clear that I don't want to go into and, and you know, I, I, I ended up having really good leaders even then. Uh, we were very clear that Big Bang would not work, right? Mm -hmm. And then how do you not Big Bang this? So that was always a constant battle. The second thing was that uh, how do you actually generate real scale? Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I remember spending a lot of time literally just doing that. Like, you know, not, we have these how, things. How do you test for that kind of scale though? Just yeah. getting into that, yeah. So we had to come up with our own, uh, we said, okay, you know, naively, you know, people end up using JMeter and things like that. Or uh, we said, no, I want to sort of generate, you know, we want to think like the business again, what are our data conditions, hmm. right? So, okay, what are the type of customers that will show up? Yeah. And IPL is an interesting property in general, uh, right? Because uh, people who have never come to your platform before they come to your platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I remember, uh, I think during the pandemic, you introduced OTP based logins. Yes. First time. Yeah. yeah. Around that time. Sure. Around that time. I think then the first IPL happened, uh, your OTP service crashed, I believe. <laughs> right. It didn't, but something else did. But uh, regardless, uh, yeah. but you're right. And you know, like everybody's writing on Twitter that I'm not getting the OTP. Like that's even pre-match, like not even before the match scale. Like Correct. everybody wanted to insert the OTP at the same time. That's right. That's right. So, you know, very different things happened in the back end. But yes, that was absolutely the customer experience. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, we said that, okay, what are our customer personas? What will be their journeys? And then obsessively, uh, you know, I'm also a very big fan of visualizing. So, you know, we had flowchart, sequence diagrams, and just getting into the weeds of saying, what is every interaction going to bring? Right. right? And how do we model that? So we ended up, you know, writing a bunch of scripts uh, using Gatling and you know, creating load generators and things. But even that, we didn't have the capacity to kind of go all the way up. So I said, okay, you know, this is going to be like a marathon. Yeah, right? yeah. Have, you, have you ever run a marathon? I haven't, but you know, I, I, I know the half science marathon of marathon I have. You've run the half marathon, yeah. right? So, you know, I don't know if you ever go to, you know, marathon coaches in general, like my friends tell me, they tell you that you don't run a full marathon till you run a full marathon. 
right right you work your way up to work it. your way up to yeah, right yeah. so it's not that i'm running full marathons every day so okay you can do you know whatever you're doing 5k 10k 15k yeah, you stay absolutely. there and then on the day off that's mind over matter and you are able to crack it right correct, so correct, correct. okay if we can't then that's what we will do yeah right and uh, that's what we did and the first day itself you know uh, and you know i uh, my leaders always give me a hard time because no matter how much we prepare and, and you know this is again and uh, one of the things i talked about in terms of operations operationally running the platform was a huge deal right we spent a lot of time simply you know we've been able to run the last 3 4 events large events all from home in the pandemic exactly that's yeah. not possible without having a lot of rigor again here i went to formula 1 So I love to cheat, uh, right? And say, hey, where, where, who has solution spaces that I can, you know, cheat from? Uh, and you know, Formula One has uh, this concept of, uh, you know, they have race directors, race directors, they have game marshals, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So or or race marshals. So I I said, okay, I have this whole concept of having a game marshal. Ah, uh, Jitan was talking about that when he was here. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Jit uh, Jit's been uh, has seen that madness from the inside. Yeah. So for every game, I said, this person is the leader of this game. Yeah. No decision. happens without the get go of this person right and i remember uh, and, you know we we had to get to that point like the first uh, ipl i was the game marshal for like the whole thing every day i was at work it's very and interesting is because it's a like both a tech challenge but you're also looking at it from a like because people are coming for the match so you also have to look at it on the match angle as well it has to be has Because to be right tech tech and product they are not separate things in that sense yeah it's not so the operations of it in fact and that's the point i actually want to reiterate that it wasn't just enough that we built a tech platform we uh, did as much scaling as we could what was very material was that did we have the operational muscle to pull it off also right i think that really held, has held us in good stead through the years hmm. right when we started this adventure nobody knew I, until date and you know and i always uh, you know we had this betting pool when uh, these big events happen saying you know what would be the concurrency today mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you know while i end up putting very wild numbers i am always surprised right yeah. and i am always the kind of content you have and and the people uh, that come to watch it digitally it's insane and i think we've been very fortunate to be kind of the tip of that spear in the last 5 years to show what's possible digitally yeah right and it's been a evolution of things and i think we we managed I, i think you know whether it's luck and destiny as you're talking about it we just happened to be in that position to reveal that yeah but also it comes on the back of a lot of hard work from the team to really be prepared for that right so we never say that oh you know what we are only as good as you know this is again going back to uh, ajit's comment about when we could barely do a million he was thinking about 15 million right so now how do you bake in that business vision that may seem ridiculous into something that is like what ha- what happens if it really comes to pass yeah 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 can you do it right and, and there's always like there've been interesting moments in the last couple of years where you know we are we're almost using all of india's internet or we're all out of compute like there've been all these like fun moments where you're like it's very surreal when you think about it you're like oh okay like i don't have any more runway <laughs> to give i don't know what happens like you know literally when the first year uh you know when we ran this in 2018 the finale you know we used to joke that we'd cross 10 million yeah at that point uh, you know we, we at one point in that in that tournament we started to uh, google and say who has the concurrency record yeah because it felt like it would we were like you know ramping Some our way there. yeah we started to barrel our way through because we said the first day i think we had like 5 5 5 5.5 million if i'm not mistaken that was way more than we ever had and this was of course micsk always brings out the crowd uh and we started to the group started to say hey what is the concurrency record at that point there was this guy called felix baumgartner who had jumped from the stratosphere or something apparently on youtube eight and a half million concurrent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that was the you know anecdotally or whatever we, that's what we could find we said okay uh and we said okay i don't know if we'll get there right and i i remember this one game where uh it was a slow night I think it was like Punjab versus something, and Chris Gill went crazy, and I was I was uh, doing something else, and then I I just looked at the screen, and you know there was like some seven odd million. I was like, what is going on? Like, how are people coming on? And that's when a lot of the scale also depends on what's happening in the match, right? Absolutely, right. When and people uh, start tweeting about, and more people start joining in, and all. Yeah, and uh, the 
the magic was always of course for me i'm a big dhoni fan so you know we there is uh, dhoni is like worth like 4 or 5 million concurrency right he, dhoni comes to bat boom <laughs> done yeah, incredible uncanny yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know when we were coming back to the finale we literally when we were just bursting past we went past eight, you know it was 8 and 8 half million was at that point the the high level mark and when we went past that i i literally i remember someone coming in and saying you know what's going to happen Mm. I said I don't know. We aren't. This is uncharted territory. But again, you know, just focusing on the operations aspect of it, and we were like, okay, what needs to happen when this happens? Okay, just stick stick to your uh, protocols and 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 hold the line. Right. But yeah. So that's how we <laughs> have been able to get to this. I think so. The operations aspect is very key, along with you know whatever technical aspect you put out there. I don't think they are separate. uh i have read about i think uh, this uh, generating real scale i think uber also had a very nice thing about hailstorm yes like they collect data of last 10 hours and they throw it into the system in 1 hour to use sure because real scale is very hard to emulate because just because hard. every piece of my system can run at you know x million rpm does not mean that real scale it will still handle because you know you don't know right i think uh production data variety will kick your behind Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one thing that I have learned through my career. Yeah. No matter how much you prepare, there will always be something that burns. You were talking about that OTP instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was some random thing, right? Like you know, at every time you sort of say, "I've got everything lined up," right? And it's not just you, right? It's a whole ecosystem that you have to leverage. Right. That is the other thing that you know people, you know, and and again, when you are actually running at this scale, you realize that you know it takes a village. Hmm. it's not just what your product is okay you put it out right it, it it is similar to sort of saying that you know again going back to formula 1 you need the weather to cooperate like things could change like you have no idea how the the characteristics of the world sometimes happen. you might be depending on third party services who have not seen the kind of scale you're right because of you <laughs> absolutely i you, the you know the first day of 2018 ipl uh there was major uh, vendor we were working with they thought we were dosing them <laughs> Yeah, and we had to get on a. I had to get on a call and tell them this is legitimate traffic. Yeah, these are stop throttling us. Yeah, right. And you know we we, and we over time I'm like you know I personally will call and meet every vendor leader and tell them it's going to come. There is there's a tsunami that is going to come at you. Yeah, it is real. Prepare for it. Please prepare with us. Yeah, yeah. right. And over the years we've had that, and you know we've had some success, but. so there are many things you have to sort of orchestrate to actually eke out the win it's not and it's truly a team sport i mean yeah uh, when i say it takes a village i think the coordination and the kind of protocols over the years it's been nuts right and real traffic is always very different you know you prepared for it you know like uh, i remember the early game days even now right so uh, the team that used to orchestrate the game days used to get yelled at a lot because they used to be like your load is unreasonable like nobody is going to ramp up so quickly right because the services used to flame out yeah and it, people used to be like damn now i have like i've orchestrated all this now i have to go back and reset it so that i can run the game day again how am i going to do it so there used to be a lot of this uh, friction in the group saying that this is a bogus load but then all that stopped once you know when we got to the real deal yeah yeah in reality then you know we sailed through and then people were like yeah that was worth it <laughs> uh one thing that that also uh, fascinated me also is that a uh, lot of other uh, live uh, sports streaming uh, that i've seen many times uh, look back does not exist like you just can see like yeah. uh, i think people who have not actually implemented tech systems they don't understand how much of a different both the things are yes yes because then you just have a buffer on some some end point versus giving look back is very different yes. i think hotstar also day one look back wasn't there do you think it was added we, we used to so we we had it and it, and it's good that you're talking about buffer management right yeah. classically if you think about buffer management right there are no infinite buffers yeah of course right? you can decide now you know uh, however whatever your your experience in memory management has been now apply that to uh, and and i think this is the beauty uh, that over the years i i, I keep now i think later in my career i you know it it becomes a lot more apparent to me where i always have tried to cheat over patterns that are already been learned before yeah right so classically you say that can you have a monotonically increasing buffer yeah sure you could but then over time that is going to 
reduce the performance or the characteristics because you know change the characteristics of your running system yeah of course i mean the right throughs and all they will take some resources somewhere I mean, nothing is infinite obvious anymore. right yeah okay now apply this to uh, uh, you know uh, when we were doing now uh, a cricket match is either 4 hours for a t20 yeah or 8 hours for a one day yeah okay now apply this to uh, you know uh, let's just go gets down to brass tacks right the uh, hls spec essentially is a series of segments stitched together yeah right and it's a file index it's at its very basic form yeah. it is literally a monotonically increasing file or it's infinitely increasing file right? you yeah. keep uh, appending to the end and you keep going you keep pulling it down yeah right that's what distinguishes it from uh, the vod content but yeah. uh, in a four hour event over time so now if you have a look back over time you always when you begin the session now your chunk size is your file your manifest has become so large yeah that your internet is not going to keep up with downloading that correct correct and it's going to keep buffering over and over again this is something that like while it is obvious now you know i say it right it wasn't obvious when we initially when i like, go oh, why why is there buffering what's going on and we said we've, we've tried everything let's look at the video let's look at the player and of course you know it's been a journey uh, you know it continues it, it's video streaming is hard so many variables and uh, i think it when someone you know one of our partners actually when we were analyzing it eventually they said you know what when we were looking at the patterns ultimately this blob got so large that that it, the internet speed was just not enough to keep up with it yeah that increase the retries and that increase the buffer which is why we actually don't have a long uh, scrub back hmm. in live events yeah we have a short one yeah we have I mean, a short one a 15 minutes it's not what you can hours go back. and all yeah correct right you but even to... that is challenging versus like say youtube does not have a look back at all for live events uh for, for uh, it, it depends on like uh, like i have done a lot of youtube lives so you have to select whether you want a look back or not correct. the latency is a lot more if you do with a look back because they will be that's right creating the buffer real time at the time otherwise they won't have the look back all of all. all of it matters there is i mean video streaming is so incredibly complex i think i have, and i continue to learn and by no means authority right but there are so many factors that go into video streaming and when you start to think about it whether it is you know how are you encoding a frame right like literally starting from the basic saying uh you know we used to talk about when i started hotstar right uh, there was this twitter meme that used to go around which really bothered me like i i love you know my product is my baby so i take it very personally but uh first year used to be like you know there there, there was this uh meme that used to be hey these are you know real fans and about a minute or later hotstar fans <laughs> that was the level of latency now inherently ott is latent yeah there's nothing you know uh, cable tv is is the fastest in that sense yeah um uh, and you know if you are ever at a live event right and you have access to a tv for whatever reason right if you're on a box or something by chance yeah but even otherwise just observe that you know someone did something on field and you know watch if you are hotstar open or any other app for that matter the latency you can can see you're literally like you know typically a ball behind uh, is is what it is you know anecdotally but even to improve uh and again talking about patterns to even improve that latency what the group did was bare bones classic engineering which is to say okay from acquisition to the point of delivery what's the waterfall hmm where are we losing time right right how can we and and, and this is such a multidisciplinary thing and i've been fortunate to have people who think like that right right it's not about oh you can program java so you can crack this problem right Yeah. we're sort of fundamentally saying that you know how do i optimize you know given a profile how am i optimizing a piece of code right you say hi i'm going to look at the stack i'm going to look at uh, you know heap i'm going to look at each of these segments and see where the time is going and then i'm going to zero down on where potentially things are yeah. there are loops that have to be optimized or some memory or some buffer allocation some threading something yeah but taking those patterns and applying this to this sort of a problem statement saying the video feed is coming from the ground how is that making its way to the studio how much latency is the studio adding how much latency is the contribution encoders adding and then like literally thinking about what protocols it's to it's use it's a supply chain right so fundamental looking at that and just doing that fundamental improved us to where we are today hmm. right i don't see that meme anymore so it's good yeah uh, i think uh, now uh, cable tv and hotstar is at the same price yeah but roughly about the same i mean there's a huge difference still behind we can still do a lot more technology yeah. now with uh low latency hls is is uh, an interesting space but again you know standards adoption 
standards keep moving much way ahead over what the adoption in the ground is yeah right so you have to also interestingly because we have such a large footprint you will say oh you know netflix or whatever even youtube for that matter but creating a truly massy product right like i have people who are you know uh, they, they they watch on like such small screens yeah i mean that's something i do want to get into uh, with because uh, like me 10 years i'm doing mobile engineering that's that's true where true passion lies and i think uh, i i am extremely fascinated by because i see people even in a metro so like watching a live match on hotstar and like connection flickers like you are connected to sometimes three towers you're switching between towers so like somebody's bowling and the hand gets stuck and then then it it continues from there it's very difficult to do i i get it how uh, so uh, how much of a challenge on the distribution side is and uh, what are the steps you have done to conquer that any insights would love to know that because sure you know, tier 3 tier 4 uh, towns and all you're distributing a, on phones it's a nightmare right and it, it's a multi variable problem again right so you literally have to start from a point of saying that you know am i creating so again if you think about fundamentally video right so video and, and you know anyone who's watched youtube knows that oh there is 360p and you know you have resolution levels yeah think of these as ladders right hmm. each ladder is an incrementally heavier file yeah more bits chunks are bigger yeah very obvious right so far so good so uh, starting from what is the selection of the bit rate now while it's a 360p i can encode that at very different, different bit rates available actual bit rates yeah. right so starting with what the choice is over there right and none of what i'm saying is it's all away, it's like classical literature right but people are, it's very thoughtful people say okay how much what is the gap between the ladders that becomes the thing yeah right and then figuring out the right sweet spot for our markets right while there is a uh you know typically 1 1.5 1.5 is i think the bar if i recall correctly that between ladders what is the bit rate should be yeah. because that influences how your uh abr algorithm that is making the choice right like it's like you know you're stuck in traffic in bangalore right like and you know people are rising on bangalore right, this last two weeks but you're stuck in traffic anywhere if you're driving a you know let's say a, a traditional gear shift car you decide whether you know if the road is open you go faster right you will uh you know upshift or you will downshift So this is how the video player also works. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, traditional pro players or in general players or you know whether YouTube, you know, you start with seeing something pixelated and then it gets sharper. Yeah. That's you know the ABR kicking up and taking you adaptive, higher. Adaptive. They call Adapt it. It's a magical word, but it's a lot of all of this happening. Sure. The adaptation is is the adaptation to the network condition. Network condition. Right. But it is always a point in time uh, thing. Right. Imagine that you know you you are at the base of a fly flyover. the flyover is the road is empty in front of you you start zero and you are like you hit like 100 kmph at the top the moment you crest it you realize there's a jam in front of you yeah right instantly of course you know of course the safety hazard but let's say you have to instantly pull back and say okay boom i am going back to zero or like 10 kmph or something like that so this is basically buffering yeah and there are like challenges to it as well because you might be already downloading the next big 720p chunk but do you realize the network can afford only 144p absolutely, now absolutely right absolutely you're so, stuck with downloading a 720p chunk while this is happening which is the those are buffer tunings really you basically say that you know how much buffer do i need to fill before i start streaming yeah which is where the start lag shows up start lag shows up right so if you have great uh, internet you don't need to have a low buffer for example in a connected environment your buffer setting can be actually super low and you your video will start rapidly yeah so why can't you do that right or in a environment where you know the network condition is going to be if in like in a mobile environment your video may take longer to start because it's filling up the buffer for you yeah now figuring out what the right layer for you to begin is and i'm calling this you know which resolution to begin you at yeah right because then you are then you are starting to fill the buffer with that and then deciding to jump up right so starting at the right point is important yeah deciding when to jump up is important right and many times you say ki you you know you say that like in the flyover example i just gave you your adaptiveness is literally what you can see hmm. so your look back is i have let's say k samples that were really good yeah let me jump up right but the k plus 1 sample is going to be a bad one yeah and you're going to like start at damn you know now i have hit problem so uh, we we, we spent a lot of time sort of actually being efficient on encoding the video that also matters how many bits are you really sending yeah right do you need to send and, and live sports again you know fast moving action so lots of things are changing so that's something we paid attention to and 
The other thing that we've spent time on is to sort of uh, really figure out what's the right place to start you at. And also trying to spend time on, and this is lately again, it gets, you can get exotic with, but again, if you think about classically learning your condition, right? So, you know, you were giving the example of being in a tier two, tier three city or in a mobility uh, example. If I know that you're in a mobile environment, right? Yeah. You know, Arnav is going to travel from, I don't know, Belandur to Domlur or wherever he yeah. is. Uh, over time, if if I can create that sort of intelligence in the product and then decide how the ABR works, yes, that is always helpful because it knows that even though you saw a clear ramp below over the crest, it's a jam. Right. Right. So you make that prediction and say, no, I'm just going to stay where I am right now instead of causing a buffer. Right. So over time, there are things like this and you can, this is a science by itself. I mean, you know, video streaming so, has come up. Uh, I would like to uh, know more about this as well because it's, it's, it's definitely piquing my interest here. Is, uh, say, your distribution is also lots of channels. Like there is the TV app, Google. And I mean, I mostly consume Hotstar via that, by the way, on my Android TV. Good, you're paying the bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, there's mobile, there's, I mean, a lot of people do it on the laptops as well. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, so, so for a lot of those layers, obviously, existing solutions exist, like, you know, like day one, somebody building something on a Android app with, with streaming, just use ExoPlayer or something like yes, that. Yes, yes. Uh, right. But then because you are the person who is at the client side as well, you are the one who has built the app, uh, you kind of obviously collect information like where the person is traveling or not, Absolutely. what pocket of the city they are in and all of those intelligence, that data that you can start gathering. Right. Right. And then based on that, you can then start investing into the, the intelligence on how to do that. So how much of that investment you have been doing and what have been... A lot. I mean, that by itself, everything you just said yeah. are things we've been, you know, that's what my platform team focuses on. And over the years, you know, we've gone multi-CD and, and really, uh, you know, the beauty of having such a massive product is that, you know, the, the data you get is insane, right? We have almost like about 15 billion odd touch points coming to me every day. That's my click stream. Right. Uh, and... During a live event, especially, there is a lot of telemetry that is flowing back to me right. over the years. And it's it's been a journey. I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, you know, we just got here and the work continues. But literally starting from very basically saying that first fix the hygiene. Yeah. Always, you know, be very first principles on sort of saying, you know, we talked about the waterfall. Okay, let's, let's look at what we can do at the origin hmm. to make things better. So once those are exhausted, we say, okay. Now on the delivery side where you're accepting it, what can you do better? Yeah. There is a lot of work we do with our uh, delivery partners as well, right? I, um, it's, uh, it's, you know, every now and then I see a lot of, you know, it's classical something. You know, I remember uh, this, this uh, young engineer once told me that I don't want to work in this team because uh, all you do is crud. Um, <laughs> I said, well, you know, come to think of it, all engineering is crud. Well, hell. <laughs> Maybe we should all find different profession. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's how simplistically you think about it. And I'm thinking I'm of everything as credit is actually a good thing, I feel. Because when I'm teaching, and I see you have a repository, data source, whatever you say, that's where something will be fetching from. And somebody is getting data from you. You're creating a business logic between. Correct. Every time if you take a engineering problem statement, if you break it down into like an MVC kind of setup, <laughs> it's great because you'll be able to solve it better. It's, it's good to think of everything as well. Absolutely. So you, you're spot on, right? I think the, the reason I'm, I'm bringing up the anecdote is to illustrate a point that, uh, you know, you think uh, it's, 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 you know, when, when you handle this any kind of scale, no scale, and again, going back to Formula One, right? You know, why, why don't more people just go out, buy a Formula One car and throw it onto the track? It won't work yeah. because you have to tune every small aspect of it, yeah. right? So we work with our partners. I tell all my partners that I will not work with you if you're a black box. Hmm. I want to get in the weeds with you. Yeah. I will optimize, you know, I will get down and optimize to the smallest level thing because both of us will learn. Yeah. Right. And I think the, the partners who worked with us uh, in the last couple of years have grown, who have worked with us like this. The other partners have fallen by the wayside, but when you know, this is sort of getting in again to continue what you were asking me that even at the delivery layer, yeah. at each point trying to figure out, you know, where are the hotspots being created? How are we able to mitigate it? Are we able to sort of shard things properly? Or, you know, even fundamentally looking at, okay, uh, there are very simple things, right? Like, uh, and the way to think about it is that, you know, of course, while we're in the cloud today and everything is, is sort of commoditized, think of them as public highways. Right now, it's okay on a 
a regular day, right? But when you are running a Formula One race, then you need a dedicated track on a public highway. Yeah. Then yes, then either you have a dedicated track, cost money, yeah, right, or you fine tune it so that your car is able to make it out of every other thing. There is some thing that paints you in a better way, yeah, right. And you have to obsessively understand each segment of you know even in Formula One you you look at hey what are your sector times, right? Which is classically waterfall again. Yeah. So even applying the same principle over and over again, right? I'm I'm like a broken record. Then sometimes you look back at these things and say like, these are really the simple things. Yeah. Are, it, it's not doesn't require a PhD or you know crazy downlight travel you know memory manipulation techniques to figure these things out. Sometimes just asking the basic question, saying you know we we once had this big outage. and uh, when we dug into it the rca revealed that the there was a there was a block in between that was inspecting every packet what was inside the packet hmm and we said why you like yeah that just what comes out of the box <laughs> so i'm like i don't want this. so you know then you get into saying well then i do want to have a bespoke solution for my packets right right i don't want you and this is again getting back to the whole formula 1 uh, paradigm or pattern what as if you will Yeah, yeah, no, but but this is interesting because uh, I mean, uh, like, for example, I'm teaching somebody just to get started with with building things. Like, okay, side project, let's try to build a streaming app. I mean, day one solution would be okay, RTMP stream, plug sure. it in, right? Uh, but then when it is at a hot star scale, you will have to like optimize for sector times. We still we still acquire with RTMP. So the the distribution on the internet is is HLS or. you yeah. know uh, it's corresponding whatever flavor you depending on the device and so on but it's the bar to create a streaming product is so low today yeah and it's a good thing right? it's a good thing yeah, yeah. the uh, standard is there for correct. from everybody to start from yeah correct the the curse of scale is that for maybe 3 or 4 days in a year when you have the scale when there is a big billion day or there is a india pakistan game yeah only on those days like for that day it pushes you to really you know stretch your infrastructure yeah your you know how you engineer something a lot of times and and most companies may not need that and it's important to sort of recognize that yeah. this is again sort of exploiting the data uh, and and making decisions like right? for engineering leaders coming back to thinking about problem statements many times people just say oh you know i'm like hey why do you want to join hotstar they're like i want to do it because you know i want to work on scale so i said you may not work on scale Mm-hmm. We didn't join this organization knowing that it would have scale in it. Yeah, we found the scale, mm-hmm. but fundamentally, what you will learn here is is engineering. Yeah, like I don't do any rocket science, right? I'm sure you know when you go back and you you teach a a, a cohort, uh, you you focus. I think again, focusing on the fundamentals. Yeah, that's what gets you here. Absolutely, I I, I had uh, very recently two three four weeks back uh, Kailash Nath here, and I loved one thing he said. I was talking about like, what do you make of these just people talking about uh, micro services, micro front ends, uh, breaking <laughs> things down, uh, and he's like, uh, one thing very important is you know we build software. We are not building services. We are not Spot building on. Uh, you know. Spot on. Take a problem and we're building a software to solve it, and then however you want to break it down comes with the problem that. Look, I think. Uh, it's good to have beliefs i think you know what is what is that saying uh what is it, strong opinions lose the held you know and, yeah we clear strong opinions we clear right uh it's important to and i i think i think that's where i think as a learner you always want to be humble and constantly accept inputs that the environment is giving you hmm. it could be people it could be context whatever it is right the context becomes very important and kelash is spot on and you know this is what i tell the team also is that I am not a technologist who wants to create tech for the tech, sake of tech. Yeah. You come to me and say, "Hey, let's do Golang, and you know, let's move all our services to Golang." Like, why? Yeah. He was like, "Oh, you are not an adopter of technology." I said, "What? Always, uh, you know, our uh, you know, and our cultural values, you know, customer obsession is the first value, and I love it because it always helps me to reiterate that vocabulary to my team, saying, "What are you doing for the customer?" Hmm. right and takes me back interestingly you know uh, 2018 i remember there was this one instance where you know we were tasked with creating this uh, uh, this a uh, game uh, if you played watch and play on hotstar uh-huh. you know uh, there's this game now this is again an impossible thing to do you are actually talking about playing a prediction game on a feed that is inherently latent yeah yeah right and you are looking to synchronize it with what you know millions of people are doing yeah, yeah. so if you've uh, you know the the group that was making it 
right so literally the the problem statement was uh, i posed a question to you millions of people answered there was a window in which it was open the window closed the moment the window closed all the answers had to be tabulated and answer has to be immediately correct sure yeah and uh, i remember the engineering leader was working on at that time he was at his wits end because he was like java is just not scaling it's like i have stripped it down stripped it down it's okay let's strip it down strip it down let's strip it down to basic like it's not i think it was uh, sorry there was a python uh, endpoint that they were using then it was like it's not happening it's not happening and then uh, it, they eventually rewrote in java and said okay java's got it's too fat it's not going to work out so okay we'll write it in golang and you know we said kill the scale right we like we can do all this like god awful dps now and in the actual event uh my leader came back to me is like he was so super disappointed because he he had scaled for so much scale at that point <laughs> right so i think again uh, sort of illustrating the point that you know we always um, want to sort of root our solutions in what it does for the customer right right and as technologists it is our responsibility to leverage technology to move faster right right maybe you know uh, moving to golang is the right answer or using flink is the right answer because you know it it makes you more operationally efficient whatever it is right. but let's start from there because then your you know immediately your conversation becomes stronger and yeah i mean you know uh, i was narrating that anecdote about uh, you know having uh, more microservices than engineers hmm. classically the microservices pattern came about to unlock decoupling yeah right now classically if you decouple sticking with distributed systems you're going to have contention hmm. right and if you don't have enough cores let's say to run each of them you're going to have the same people just context switching yeah thrashing yeah right so i'm a big fan of also sort of saying that you know all i i i joke and i say you know all the answers are in computer science yeah you can map those <laughs> things into org design it really helps work. me yeah, yes, yeah absolutely in org design or even when you are thinking of should i you know many people come say oh i am a st- small startup should i do a monolith or a so you know sometimes the answer is literally well okay how many people okay you may have that many microservices how many people are going to build it concurrently you know you're doing it and you say oh may, I said, you know separation can occur logically as well yeah exactly right so uh, there is i think we we sort of there is so much uh, gyan floating around right and it's overwhelming i can yeah. i can totally get it yeah 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 No, I think is particularly this is uh, microservice and all of that. I think it it gets like somebody comes and talks at a conference, and then also somebody maybe selling cloud services pushes that agenda, <laughs> and then uh, oh, what yes. happens is like young engineers getting into the industry sometimes get sort of uh, you know picked up by the tide. Sadly, uh, but I think we being very clear about. uh uh because uh, i remember uh, we were talking with uh, amod and he had written this very interesting twitter thread about uh, say you have to uh, to like you have a d- data layer and a api layer all of it in the same monolith you have split it out unless like after splitting it out there are a lot of uh, api requests that are coming in and finishing at the api layer itself and not going to the data layer mm. uh, then you get an advantage but if that's not happening in the splitting out you just added extra hop extra hop yeah right and then also like if you split it out maybe by splitting it out you are able to bring down the availability like uh, increase the availability of both of them both the systems yes both the systems somehow right but if you have not done that then what happens is the probability gets multiplied so your net net total availability actually comes down you're right so yeah, this can know. also be down that can also be down i mean so but you know i think one of the 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 thing that i i see more often and i don't, i want you know I tell all my younger engineers also to focus on this. Is that you know today there is a lot of solution spaces available right away. The yeah. bar to deliver something, like you know, I it's you know I was telling you like this. Hotshot is probably the one place where I haven't coded into the main line, but I know that you know. And this was uh, this was a funny story from one of my interviews. Right, I went to this like security company, and uh, the guy uh, it was a coding round, and uh, he said, "Have you ever?" Uh, done any security programming i said no uh, so we proceeded to have a bunch of conversation he said okay i'm going to uh, uh, you know can you code this up so i said sure i'll give it so he, i i told him uh, i have never coded it so he said okay i'll give you the internet i'll come back in 30 minutes i said sure i'll done so now that is even easier you know you can go on stack uh, or for and find the answer someone yeah. has already solved this for you yeah but many people will just take that and implement say hey i'm done with my day's task and i'm I'm through right here is a solution 
someone else has written it right all answers are out there if you search long enough okay. uh where people don't spend time is actually trying to understand why it works and getting yeah. into what amod was getting into that you know leaders who sort of put in the time or any any engineers who put in the time to understand the pros and cons of the choices you make right the context helps them because then you say yeah you know if if you are going to be able to i oh, i am facing scaling challenges yeah by forking it i can actually have more levers to scale it and that's why i'm doing it yeah. right now sometimes it could even just be taking like a uh, the same repo and just deploying it separately right which is the least uh, low bar for like you know saying that you have you know got services microservices without really having them yeah right? you say hey, there are different endpoints at the same repo that everything is in one code base but they are deployed in a way that are serving different stacks hmm. right so if you understand why or you ask keep asking why i'm like yeah. curiosity is fundamental right correct, correct correct if you keep asking why over time you will figure out you know why certain decisions were made the way they were yeah, yeah. i Perhaps. remember recently i was a uh, uh, couple of years back i was interviewing somewhere and uh, like i had uh, there was some take home project like half done and it has had to be built or something and then a very senior principal engineer he has been like in the industry for 20 years or so alex i think was his name yeah and uh, i think he now works at slack so here uh, and we had a conversation before the project was to be built and i said that okay are there some uh, can i use some third party libraries or do you want me to like uh, do it mm. he's like i really have no opinion on what you can use cannot use uh i will only be asking you questions why and you should be able to defend them yes. if to you know solve the problems that i have given you if the entire 100% of the code that you use you imported from a github repository i'm fine with that absolutely but you know was that the best solution that was available and then maybe because you have copied code from somewhere you have saved time which you have utilized to do something else as long as you are able to defend that i am absolutely happy yep. i don't really care yep. but if you use something and you can't defend can't why defend are you using it, it? That, that's that, a problem that's a problem yeah. that's a problem yeah no I, i think i think that's that's very true today and i think you know even you can extend that further to say that hey i'm just using a dynamo db let's say yeah. if you don't understand how dynamo db works yeah you're in for a world of hurt correct correct the moment you know and you know it's uh, classically saying that uh, and 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 i think you know younger startups or or you know let's say small to medium the growth and you know when when your business takes off this is the stuff that's going to hurt you the most yeah right and 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 that is where uh, i think tenure or just being able to go back to your fundamentals really helps yeah 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 so yeah nice nice uh, i'll, I'll uh, move on to asking uh, some questions about uh, like how the team has also scaled uh, because yeah. uh, now i have a team of 600 people roughly about that much yes globally uh, that's a pretty big tech team uh, pretty big tech team yes right uh and and uh, when you had joined hostar i think uh, how many engineers i think about 30 35 people from our region yeah right uh so obviously i mean i i would say how does it scale like from 30 to 600 <laughs> and, and you know uh, there would have obviously been different phases if you could just narrate me like, like you know first few years how you scaled how how does it work uh now? yeah it's a beast right i think uh, i it's so hard because you know uh, and we talk, we talk about it inside hotstar saying that you know this this beast doesn't sit still hmm. in a high growth company uh, you know you're constantly and you know I, and i i i've heard so many stories from people who are early at flipkart uh, and you know other other organizations that have grown like that and everyone resonates with that you're like yeah man that was hard yeah. we, i know what you're talking about right and, and sort of amplifying and it is again sort of the uh, you know when i started at hotstar i remember you know and i'd say this is a uh, uh, the you know i'm a big ben horowitz fan and and you know he talks about how leaders need to adapt with the organization yeah i was very much i think i think i was in a funk at some point i was very much saying i want a small team of very high performing engineers and we will deliver gold it quickly turned out that i had more work streams that i had to deliver and and my best engineers were also not able to deliver right and uh, this is something that i when i reflect on you know i always go back in the journey and say that self awareness for a leader becomes very important and and specifically i'm coming to you know the point of growth uh, when you think about it like that you have to uh, again going back to patterns to say that what you know are your resources working on quality things yeah i can take an arnav and you know tell arnav that you know what arnav here create you know push these pixels and anna will do it 
but is that the best use of arnav's talent yeah so you have to keep asking you know if you ask that question you say okay well okay not to say that that work is is demeaning or of low scale or so on but you're saying that you're not you know you could uh, you could it's it's like it's like having a ferrari and driving it in first gear and there's a there's a, a mental model or paradox around that and and I, i just remember the particular there was some kora answer i read it some 7 8 years back talks about like uh, there is a surgeon who can perform surgeries uh, but who, who is very passionate about gardening and uh, if you give him to curate a garden he will do the best job hmm. right uh, so now you need to save a person who is in a surgery and you need to also do some gardening okay so uh, the best you don't put the best gardener to garden you 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 take any gardener to garden but you put that person to do the surgery That's because right. you know you will have to look at the opportunity cost of putting the best person to do gardening if you just do that there's the opportunity cost for the surgery being not done totally spot on and i think you look at any team uh, you know there's a lot lot of discussion now with the indian cricket team or any team for that matter recognizing people's strength telling them what their roles are yeah this is consistent every you hear this all the time and it is a simple mantra right but it's so hard and profound to grasp and implement so i think going back to again just scaling one thing that became very apparent was that we uh, when we started i'm surprised how a lot of you know we were talking about this earlier in the afternoon uh, was also that you know the hiring process is actually a sales pipeline hmm right and you you know when you look at it and this is where again i think my uh, i give credit to my time spent in the enterprise trenches like yeah i mean you know taking a lead to a sale yeah that is a very discrete process you ask any sales person and she will tell you yeah boom 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 this word is this is what the metrics are yeah so fashioning your talent organization like that yeah right and again this is a function of you know getting we were i think at one point uh, and this is again <laughs> i think you know credit to my uh, my earlier manager who really pushed us and i think you know like that was really where i talk about uh, i i go back and think that i was very much in the small company mindset yeah versus saying dude we are burning we need to ramp up yeah. right so you know it was a bit of a shake you know get up moment yeah for me as a leader and it was we said you know what we are going to hit 10 hires a week hmm now that level of scale to hit 10 hires a week you work it backwards the top of the funnel the conversion the amount of and what you have 30 people yeah right and you know I, i'm sure a lot of people uh, you know if my if my team members from that time are listening it was crazy because you know we were constantly interviewing yeah constantly and it got to point where like when am i going to do the work because i'm <laughs> i'm interviewing all day and then you expect me to also build this beast you want yeah. to run for 2018 ipl excuse me <laughs> so it was just insane right and uh, but there there is no other way unfortunately to kind of pay that toll tax but optimizing that process and thinking about it again as a classical waterfall and using the right measures game changer yeah right uh, and again over there uh, you know like first 100 150 hires i used to always be the last call uh, to you know make sure that the right culture is coming in through the door because that that still you know is fundamental to me i i, I still uh, you know do with my with my fresh joiners i have a culture session yeah and again that's a ben horowitz hack uh, to say that you know uh, and you know he goes through this journey himself he talks about the hard things about hard yeah, things is word. that uh, he says you know i in the beginning i was very focused on culture and then i said okay i'm going to outsource it someone else will do it some hr person will do it yeah, no then he said hey it's not working out the way i want and he said no i and he, he said i you know the the pa- particular thing is he talks about how as a leader and even when i read it i was like damn this is me because you say i'm so busy right now you know i'm just going to delegate parts of my job I'm like this i cannot delegate yeah that's I certain things are just for this yeah. correct so i think f- number one to scale people is is the process the other thing that we also like again in missteps right uh you know i i openly proclaim that we are not a perfect organization we are constantly the one thing we are committed to is is uh, adapting and improving mm-hmm. right now a big agilist so you know fundamentally i welcome change and i, I accept new input so uh, you know it's a constant feedback loop and you know we we made several mistakes over the past you know we there were phases where uh, you know when you're growing creating uh, and this is something my you know my my leaders have really pushed me on is to use a consistent vocabulary to define culture hmm. it seems like a touchy feely thing but it is so important right like i can uh, you know today if i tell you uh, arnav i want you to you know why don't you use a facade pattern you know what i'm talking about 
Yeah. Right? Because you you know design patterns. Yeah. It is again as simple as that. that. Shared vocabulary is important. Yeah. To have a shared vocabulary, instead of saying that you know Arnav, why don't you you know create an API and then you do this, you know I can spend five minutes explaining what a facade pattern is. Or simply hey, this is a facade pattern. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it 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 just short circuits and it builds that organizational muscle memory, right? You know, uh, we have this uh, uh, like crazy uh, you know live issue process, uh, you know, and and people carry pages. It, it, it's it, my engineers tell me it's unique to Hotstar, and you know this is something from my past which I obsess about. That all senior engineers will carry pages. You wrote it, you built it, you support it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the the reason for the anecdote is you know uh, every time and that process is so ingrained, right? And every now and then we used to say, okay, should we change this or that? And you know one of my leaders, credit to him, used to always say that, Akash, it's organizational muscle. Don't change it. If it's terrible, you know, or you know, you have to make minor adjustments to move the group elsewhere. Don't make big changes over there. Hmm. So again, sort of, I think going back when you are scaling up to answer your question, creating what is important to you as a culture becomes critical. Yeah. Con- consistently using that, like one of the one of the big game changers for us was uh, to incorporate that in our feedback. Hmm. So we say, okay. These are our values. Let's talk about them in our feedback. Like we started to use it internally when we were giving feedback to each other. Right, right, right. And we also started to say, okay, let's do written transcripts. And, you know, we we have obsessively uh, detailed written transcripts when we interview people. Right. And that's, that's I, I love, I mean, it's something that I had to learn to do, you know, at Hotstar. And I really value it. I think this is an Amazon thing uh, that, that we've sort of absorbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's, you know, again, to sort of talk to each other saying, hey, I'm doing this because this is why I, I think I'm customer obsessed and this is why I want to do it. Or I want to do this because, uh, you know, trust and accountability is important to me. Yeah. Right. So I think continuing to reiterate that, that helps. And then really measuring, I think, you know, measure what matters. Yeah. Uh, that really helps. So uh, the other thing also I'll say before I close on this is that understanding who will fit in your organization, right? Because again, at different points in your organization's lifetime, you're going to have different people who you need, hmm. right? Uh, when I started at Hotstar, I was very clear that I cannot hire any freshers because I knew that I would totally ruin their first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have the time or the patience or the people, I would say, to mentor them. take on that responsibility. Right. Yes, it's a big responsibility for me as a CTO. Yeah. If, you know, if a fresher is joining my team, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, she has all the mentorship that she requires to be very, very successful and create a strong foundation. Correct. If we don't pay attention to that, we're doing a disservice to that person. So I was very clear that I will only bring on, you know, uh, experienced engineers who know, who have seen battle. Yeah. So I think I want startup experience. I want to target this cashment of, you know, organizations and let's go to town. Right. Every now and then again, when I've taken my ball off that, uh, my eye of that ball I find that you know we say okay we need come on we are really hurting we should get more people but again compromising on those things hurts because it it fundamentally doesn't gel with your overall culture and where you want to go right right so that culture bit and then driven by metrics I think becomes important longish answer but you know, that's no, all no, 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 no. makes sense uh, and I'll uh, go ahead and uh, uh, double click a little bit into uh, so so I think now at this scale I think uh, when you're hiring engineers who, who are like frontline people coming in and, you know, building stuff. And also when you're hiring uh, leaders inside your engineering org, uh, what are the primary things you're looking at, like for both the cases? I look for, uh, I look for my engineers for, when I interview, I look for curiosity. I look for fearlessness. Right. Uh, you know, if you've gotten that far and I'm typically later in the cycle these days, uh, you know, a lot of your fundamental, your your basic talent is checked off. Talent is is, our, is you know an, a quality gate to come in anyway. Yes, of course. Right, and uh, I spend a lot of time like you know I, I encourage my leaders also. Again, I'm a very visual person. For me, it's like a tree balancing exercise. Right, when we try to figure out who we want to get at, you know, well, how many SSD tools do you need? How many SD tools do you require? Right. How do you find the answer to that? Got it. so. Yeah. I say, okay, hey, it's a tree balancing exercise. Yeah. I literally create a real tree. Hmm. And I say, okay, fine. You know, okay, Arnav is here. And, you know, this is how Arnav's growth is going to be. Hmm. And, you know, Arnav's maybe mentoring. I expect Arnav at this level to mentor two, three other people. Okay. He's got only one person. So do we need people here? Yeah. Right. 
So you have to again, and this this goes back to uh, being able to articulate our roles and responsibility, right. uh, and saying, okay, what do you need of each level to contribute? And again, look, it it's not perfect. I know I'm giving you all these answers, but you know I struggle with this on a daily basis, right? Because uh, each of our and you know I, there is autonomy to my leaders. I tell them that you shape the organization the way you want, hmm. right? I want you to feel invested in creating because again, it it is. uh at least my style is very much uh, peer leadership style where you know i said look if, if there's no one else to take a call i'll take a call hmm. right uh, we don't operate that saying hey you know i am so and so and you are so and so so we say hey look you know it's we are all peers in case you know someone has to take a call and then no one wants to take it then yes you step up and you are the person to take it right like my classically tell give the example of ownership saying that you know uh, i give an army metaphor which is a bit morbid but okay you know you come to a situation you ask you say hey who's responsible i don't know most people will say i don't know anything about this right, right? like imagine i came here and uh, you know i there was you know a cameraman was missing i'm like well i don't know who's going to shoot the podcast you're like i, I don't know not my problem but i think even if you don't know anything right we all have that much basic intelligence or gumption to say okay what am i i'm going to call the next best person that i know saying hey boss there's no cameraman over here should there be a cameraman okay oh wait i'm going to call arnav he may know where the camera yeah. so i think you you take assume leadership uh, right people sometimes wait to be given and that's where i really look for in my in the my low agency high agency yes, thing yeah yes yeah the shreyas doshi thing right yeah, that's yeah. like so i mean yeah, the guy is like super profound right yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes that that's such a great framework you know and you want to look for those people who don't have to be asked to step up and i've been mean, so blessed i think i think and i think the it's testament to what we've been able to achieve at hotstar uh with you know very less people i'm no one's going to tell you <laughs> that you know my i know my team is uh, overworked and, you know they're all going to look at this and say yes uh <laughs> but you know it, it's just the the level of passion and and i think and that's that's why it's important i think for me to say that you know am i personally motivated to be on this mission right uh right and, and then i can expect that you know i can then i'm sincere in my my pitch to whoever works for me saying this is why i care about this and you know this is why you know you, maybe you should care about it. Right. spend a lot of time at work right if you're not doing something you are passionate about then what's the point right 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 uh another question i definitely wanted to ask was in mean, uh, a lot of people who actually uh, watch this particular podcast also is uh people who are just getting started with building new tech companies uh young ceos of uh, new uh, startups and i think even till few years back uh we, we would not really think of india in terms of like we can build tech companies in india for india right. like like a hot star reaching you know world beating uh, scale like creating world records and all but now i think i mean that's not a glass ceiling for us anymore we know that It, we we are building uh, stuff right from here which is you know world class in level in tech uh but uh, you know let's say you a very young company who is get, getting started uh have a good problem statement they will obviously have all of these challenges ahead scaling the team scaling the tech uh what are i would say some very fundamental things to you know uh tick the boxes and keep in mind while everything else happens like the scale happens all the things will happen what are the things you need to really stick to uh my my key advice would be to always start with your customer and say why should your customer use your product and work backwards from there i think a lot of a lot of younger uh, technical leaders i would encourage them i think one of the you know to have empathy for the product right right typically and again many organizations very <coughs> you may have product organization that to say hey you guys do this and then you know the engineers think of themselves as delivery units which is a terrible thing hmm. right if you are invested fundamentally in solving a customer problem to what kelash said i think very very spot on in terms of saying we are here to solve a customer problem yeah. we're not here to create tech per se that is incidental yeah it's it's a side effect hmm. so if you are able to sort of say that this is where i'm going to be and have a vision for saying where am i going to go next which is the context bit right like when we took on this journey at hotstar said we knew that we would serve 50 million people this is a time when we were uh, serving 3 million people right now you know it's that that's crazy man come on you know there's there isn't enough internet in india there isn't enough compute in india so okay 
fine let's find the limits so you know you and again as as the the start with the customer problem reverse engineer where you may want to be in the next one year have a awareness of sunk cost bias <laughs> right i think a lot of uh, companies that start up and, and you know it's easy to do now because the bar is so low but we spend a lot of time the the job i think of a, a young of, of of you know of of the technical organization in let's say new and emerging let's say startups is to maybe the, the first iteration you have to be willing to throw away and you have to generate really fast hmm. you take on a lot of technical debt yeah. i cannot tell you how much technical debt i have i still have lots of <laughs> bodies buried but you know we we indexed very hard on saying that yeah we know that we are doing this yeah right and there is badness in it but you have to first survive to achieve scale yeah so you have to figure out what is your uh, what what spectrum in the spectrum where are you are you fighting for survival then yeah don't don't go obsessing about oh you know what what will happen when 50 million come out how many how many can you get to 10 million can you get to that point and then move on right so i think those are important things to sort of at the very basic start with that work backwards on the customer problem build out uh, you know how you can enable customer how can you get to the customer faster right right a minimum usable product not a viable product per se so i think that's where uh, you know a lot of my fundamentals also come from that get out in front of the customer fast let her give you feedback and then adapt right get pmf at least have you know in, uh, we were talking about earlier how how uh, you know even poorly engineered products actually have great traction Right. and i've been part of plenty of teams which have been like fun fantastically engineered but we had no customers right. didn't matter at the end the the i think i really like that uh, tech debt uh, piece because uh, one thing is uh, like in in giving uh, uh, side project uh, like uh, this uh, take home project while interviewing one of the things i really like seeing is like people who have written a lot of to do comments and saying that okay i know this is broken but i've done it because it's a side project later on i will fix it yeah. cognizant of that fact like sure take up tech debt but be, be cognizant of that correct correct i use this term called forward debt uh, you know my my team hears it obsessively from me right and the simplest represent uh, representation of it is a uh, you know if you see a building coming up a scaffold is a forward debt hmm. it is a promise of a building yeah so you know if you fundamentally know yes this is where i want to be you will make better choices on tech debt okay right. so you know at least that's where with my team i say you know you know where you want to get to this may be a suboptimal way of doing it tomorrow yes you want an api but can you fundamentally start by at least separating the concern it may be another function you are calling in the same class or something like that but that's still a forward debt because the concern has been broken right right yes eventually it will be an api and some fancy predictive logic okay that's the promise of a building right. can you build a scaffold to start with correct correct so so taking a stand from that or you are saying like you know we are solving a customer problem like keeping that principle in mind and then while we keep that in mind while the company is growing while you're scaling and all of that uh, i think that principle i believe is also very important when things go wrong as well absolutely right and and uh, i have heard a lot of stories of like how hotstar very gracefully uh, exits like for example i think uh, that god of stock which is very popular like uh, when dhoni's wicket falls down and the spike comes down everybody comes to the home page maybe yeah, we can that's the we can't stop the home page from coming <laughs> but recommendation we can probably stop yeah. so how does that Uh, reflect into uh, you know handling a crisis also customer first so uh, what also helps is to have clarity on why you are there right mm-hmm. uh, and again this is credit to you know uh, very early on our leaders had a very clear policy saying why are we here we have three tenets right video must play ads must play monetize make money and then you know subscription came along at some point yeah everything else is below that right yeah. right so uh, you know this I, i talk about this in one of the blogs that i wrote about scaling uh, it's uh, the the approach is very much like if you if you you know the metaphor to think about is how do you put a rocket into space or put a satellite into space uh-huh. right on ground this is this a big device yeah. right there is a you know main uh, main thruster rocket there are booster rockets the actual thing that you put into orbit is this small yeah right so you are everyone's focused on what only this has to go up nothing else is important right and if you actually look at again following through on the metaphor after every piece has served its purpose 
you shed it yeah right and this is classically also uh, also formula 1 or even a perf- even anyone who's done any kind of material performance tuning will tell you that having that clarity on why a particular critical section needs to be do or, you know what is a critical section it is yeah literally asking what is the essence of this block of code yeah nothing else is important beyond that yeah right so now take let's work backwards from that to say that you know these are our, our real principles when we run any event and that's what forms the decision making so when the game marshal is is in the hot seat and we see things are happening we obsessively plan we we have a whole you know we call it a flight plan or you know i mean it is like a flight plan we don't call it a flight plan but it is essentially you know we call it a failure ladder essentially saying that you know we know what each component is rated for again classical engineering right you put any real machine together i'm yeah. sure mechanical engineers out there will say yes i know what you're talking about but in why should it be different for software engineering right and of right. course we talk about saying hey what is a peak tps or service can handle now that's a rating for that service yeah right you say i know what each service can handle yeah right i know that it requires this amount of compute right i know that it can cause this level of contention in the system right you say okay what if this fails right or you say that i cannot uh, you know just classically uh, you know you're talking about the the gorov podcast where or the the uh, the talk where he talks about this popcorn problem right yeah. like after the main event is over in a movie hall yeah everybody rushes to the concession stands yeah yeah, yeah. right and and how do you, you know inevitably there is in, a lot of queuing at that point queuing at that point now yeah. if they prepared for it like you know interestingly if you if you actually think back on that their solution to that is actually to you know uh, asynchronously deliver to you in the hall yeah right so don't do it in real time very right. key principle of scaling right or uh, essentially uh, you know fork your uh, you know create more edge workers yeah so you have people in the audience who are taking your order before you even show up there hmm. to delay the queuing right right, right right now of course that doesn't solve for origin scaling which is the kitchen <laughs> yeah right but you know you see how the same principles can be applied and, and we do the same thing saying that how are we able to shed weight so that we let more people through the gate right right video must play that is a prime directive right so of course at some point even that may crap out but till that doesn't happen right everything else keeps getting shut off hmm. and a lot of that planning goes into obsessively sort of you know uh, while you know we talk about while you know most and again this is not rocket science uh, although we're talking about rockets here but uh, you know people focusing obsessively on vertical testing so you know that most of the time you say i know how much my system is rated for right but when it operates in concert and again going back to distributed systems and you know uh, loops and uh, hold and waits and things like that what it does in orchestration is is something that people don't spend that much time on correct yeah. we do and we say that you know look this is how uh, these these are the personas of customers they will follow through on these journeys which will take you through all these microservices if any one of them has a problem can you short circuit that so that it lets it go hmm. right also context is important over here right the this may not be possible for a, uh, a zero da hmm. right? yeah you're <laughs> like no, dude right. you know there's mind. a step where money gets transferred usi ko short circuit kar diya exactly right so <laughs> not allowed yeah so context matters so we also say hey we are not a bank hmm. right so what so again applying the business domain and and really indexing on saying because you can also you know people get obsessively caught up in this as well yeah right and i and i see product as well as engineering leaders or design leaders to really and, and that is why it's a multidisciplinary thing to my point earlier that engineering leaders really should build empathy for design and product because you know you may you may have a it's a simple problem today like you know and you know we don't have profiles on the product today hmm. right um soon to come but today we don't have that and you know take this problem statement imagine netflix hmm. right or prime or anything you are i send you a notification i send a notification 300 million people come and watch india pakistan yeah everybody clicks that notification immediately everybody what about. is the first thing they see a profile screen yeah now that itself generates so much now that's a product decision made that a designer put together that an engineer put together 
but when you magnify it so a lot of our conversations are okay if i magnify the impact on this particular workflow is it going to hold up yeah right in terms of scale in terms of cost and there are all these things that come into play right yeah and there there have been opportunities where or there have been times where the team comes and says uh, well i need uh, these god awful number of cores to run i'm like no hell no like i i can't it's not sustainable your the the cost of running your service is so high it's not valuable the cac is too much again for engineering leaders to think like that you know we talk about why you know our cloud bills are so high because we don't talk about it in terms of customer value hmm right and also flipping back and saying that when you have a flash event you're not looking to personalize everything for example yeah yeah during that event you're not optimizing so you want that. to exploit again it is exploiting the conditions for your benefit and that really leads to you know creating these drills having these failure ladders so when you know this is what the game master does and this is why she needs to have all the telemetry possible like one of the first things we built in 2018 was like you know, I was talking about the opex bit is we realized very quickly that you know i remember we were using some apm them and we were like this is 5 minutes old <laughs> it's useless by the time you see it it is useless yeah and we said okay uh, then also saying okay you know uh, our metaphor then was to say that the the marshal is a pilot right now if you've seen any conventional uh, you know you know you walk into we fly a lot right you walk into an air- aircraft there are all these like there are like 500 dials on the damn thing yeah so many dials but everything there. do you think the pilot looks at all of them when she flies no yeah they have their critical things that they know correct they but these are all things that factor in when something happens they are taught to say okay now oh this is happening look at this damn thing this damn thing so we actually spent a lot of time the, the first thing we did was to actually create our own dashboard hmm. uh that we was touched to the bam i'm like you know when there is a crisis i don't want to be running to cloud watch i don't want to be running into the logs i yeah. want to know when it smokes i want to know hmm. right and that has held us in good stead so then when that happens we know you know you may have thought in your vertical testing that this is your rating yeah. but you are crapping out way before that and i'm going to deploy that switch to take you out of the equation yeah so i'm going to keep deploying that you know those failure switches and this is just you by the way like this is what we own <laughs> doing the same for vendors right you yeah, talk about that otp failure yeah. and uh, you should you should talk to jeet about it yeah. next time he's here uh, he'll know why but uh, the I, know, i i have a lot of friends in the mobile team so they told me they <laughs> so told you right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so so you know but it was very interesting again uh, and you 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 see cascading failure so much yeah and again just because you know if if you have a heterogeneous service or it, it's very simple thing sometimes yeah it's saying that well, you have two clusters and uh, sometimes you may just not have the same amount of compute in the two clusters mm. or the original split of the the load was such that it was skewed here this party died by the time it recovered it took so long or you know now we were talking about computer time right like microsecond even that fraction caused you know overload on the other overload side. on the other and that also died and then boom 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 like you know we we literally had this one incident where we just could not come back hmm. could not come back where we would restart fail restart fail and yeah, this is after all the preparation that we do yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i uh, i remember actually and then you know very different scale very tiny much much tinier scale but my first startup and i think uh, we were quite stretched too thin like i was teaching classes it was a net tech startup also building tech team of just two people and then i got a friend of mine from college who was at that time you know bleeding tech in another startup i got him on board as cto uh, incidentally he now works here at scaler also okay. with me like, people keep on moving together yeah, right that's lovely right? <laughs> so so varun and he joined and uh, i think it was his first week and we had some online uh, test coming up and last couple of times we had done tests bunch of times things had failed so you're like okay we'll just stay up and monitor everything so you know from new relic to data doc to everything just open trying to figure out test starts suddenly you know p- people start pinging in from on the this thing support channel unable to log in right. i like okay unable to log in we'll try to figure out what's unable to log in immediately we start seeing that just because they are unable to log in they start going to the home page yes. suddenly so home page they had some ddos protection we had the ddos protection cloud fair suddenly starts blocking them because these many people have yeah. never gone there another thing we figured out is that uh, because a lot of our audience was some colleges so in college everybody uh, comes in from the same ip because they are behind the same net yes yes so the entire host still <laughs> coming in from the same ip and like cloud fair is just blocking oh, everybody yes yes and like okay, ddos protection that, comes yeah. in and when that happened everybody suddenly called our uh, this thing customer support 
customer support against some vendor right and they are like at the time only 15 calls can come in okay that, that we were like okay uh, then uh, before that we had never had an rca culture or anything but varun was like okay let's do an rca and we started writing rca five wise and after the fifth mm. they were like okay we need to the we sixth to and seventh why also there's so many things broke right. one after the other uh, but i think at a, at a large scale system i really like that uh, there was an article by martin fowler thoughtworks guy on yeah. uh, the testing uh, strategy you should like real fake mock stub like don't don't stop don't work try to test on real as much as possible then maybe if possible fake data mocks and stubs later because you test with stubs then you don't know what will happen actually you know that that's an interesting one so the a lot of engineering leaders i don't think again have empathy for testing as a discipline hmm. even over there right the reason like you know while mocks are are material to you know uh, fundamentally decouple and let your teams go faster yeah can we can talk about that for a whole few hours but fashioning that right like if you go back like the uh, you know modeling our customer journeys yeah and making sure that you know we could create that even with mocks you were able to simulate variety yeah thinking thoughtfully about your test data hmm then building in real life real world behavior into as much as you can imagine right like this also test data for me yeah. falls into that category building real world latencies variable latencies failures yeah right into your mocks also those are things you can do to front load or shift left your your risk correct right and i think again over there uh, while yes you can absolutely the the testing in production bit is 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 the last port of call i mean you know when you don't have anything we have done it you, yeah. you know when you have no choice you're like fine you know let you'll see how it goes but again you don't never want to be surprised yeah and that is where again uh, like you know it's it's also uh, going back to a technique of i don't know if you've ever been in the situation but you know uh, maybe a lot of senior engineers or architects will empathize with this that sometimes you just can't reproduce a problem hmm. you have to just sit down you have to go through the code you have to create a dependency graph you have to literally yeah mentally figure out what is the machine trying to do yeah that then that does happen some yeah. yeah you know sometimes you just some of the like more evil problems i've had have found it solve in this uh so it doesn't absolve you from and that is the key bit i'm trying to underscore score here that you have to prepare to fail hmm. and and you know the more you do that the less you are going to bleed publicly yeah because yes you can test in public but you know your customers will see that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, and and that is a uh, uh, you know it, it 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 will be exactly what you were talking about. No, the test strategy. I think the what the Martin follows is like when he says uh, really means like anonymize some real data and throw it to your system and test it Absolutely. rather than like the entire system end to end. Like run everything up, boot up everything. So don't try to have a like fake DB. No, or yeah. don't try to have a fake endpoint because those things if you test they will give you like okay this particular system I know. is rated for this but it does not test what happens in easier reality. said than done with in the world of PII of and uh, you know so many PCI world you know but yes absolutely right and I think you know the spirit of that is to really say that you know work it on a uh, on a real system right right like uh, have all like there's so many like yeah like the the simplest things will trip you up. right right you like yeah you know i i deployed something and then uh, oh it's running great and then you realize that you know your your real world database has millions of rows right and you didn't drop an index on there so it doesn't really perform you didn't catch it in any of the lower environments because there are hundred rows and you were testing with right right so they're all i mean i'm sure there's so many examples of this yep yep uh and uh, yet another question and this one is uh, probably from another stage of engineering leaders who uh, i would ask on behalf of them which is uh, how do you uh, design good uh, growth for an engineering team because now your team has been growing and uh, and obviously there are no people in your org who are here for 5 years 6 years right uh, right and engineers engineering managers product managers they all sort of are looking for different different things out of life different things excite them uh, so how do you sort of chart out good growth for people in engineering teams um uh, it varies according to the team so you have to again leverage the context of your organism right yeah this is where uh, i uh, really double down on my tree balancing uh, technique yeah and i say okay let's look you know i sit with my engineering leaders and say okay let's look at your org hmm. visually yeah and let's talk about how you think of each person at each level right right and uh, that that gives me multiple data points one is how is my leader thinking of the organization right is it balanced enough do we have few people somewhere right 
how many you know uh, lately i have i've been very consistent with my team talking about value streams yeah. this is sort of also you know if you start with customer obsession put the customer first and say what are the value that we want to deliver to our customer that then uh, falls back into the streams that you have to run then that falls back saying each stream has a metric associated to it and then there should be a team associated in delivering that value right right so when you talk about org design also right uh, you know you can again spend a lot of time here that is a very valuable technique that i've used lately to sort of say at least for me i find i'm finding more value value in that no pun intended but uh, trying to sort of really say work backwards for something you give a customer make sure a group is allocated to it and it's not ephemeral right you don't want to have like things if you move people around too frequently they don't know what they're doing yeah so uh, give them permanence but then you know potentially you're chasing something big hmm. the pitfall that i see and you know again this is putting some distance between my own mistakes and you know my what my run has been to say that we get we get married to projects is so that i really want to you know make this page 10% faster yeah okay but relative to what value to the customer Huh. are there other things that you should be doing right. you know you say no i'm going to have a team that's only focused on uh, the payment page that's all they do they obsessively only optimize the payment page no it's not a bad thing hmm. potentially right a lot of people will jump up in arms in ecom and say of course come on that is bread butter right for them that is bread butter it is bread butter right so you say but you know it is sort of critically questioning holy cows and saying okay beyond a point is further optimization going to give you anything and what is that is there any value left in that value stream right so i think sort of critically questioning yourself not it's to always going to be dependent on the business domain like for example like a hotstar it's not everybody every day is making payments like correct you know and and that's a specific example but again coming back to uh, growth uh, what your original question was using the tree technique essentially sort of asking okay what value streams are you running in your team hmm. so the leader acknowledging yes these are my value streams these are how what i think it is organizing the groups like that so that the value is clearly articulated right now also insist on uh, one technique you know this is going back to the open table story uh, you know saying hey what do you do every every team should have an elevator pitch if i stop arna and you know arna works on some team and i ask him hey what what is your value what value are you adding he should be able to rapidly say that yeah. and i think if we don't have that then we are muddled in what we are telling our team to do they will never build that passion right right so again work in progress for me don't uh, i don't want to say that i've reached nirvana here but that's another technique i use to Makes say okay sense. what's the call to arms what is the metric hmm. that's the value stream and then underneath that saying okay how are people placed and why are their what are their personal aspirations which comes through through one on ones and connects that uh, you know i know jeet talked about quite a bit he spends and i don't know he spent an insane amount of time connecting people very important for leaders yeah, yeah, yeah. to build you know uh, uh, there was this uh, you know coach as one speaking to and she told me that so I, she i was you know we were talking about time management and i said you know i i make sure i speak to all my team members very weekly right she said why do you do that so i you know i said you know i am an empathetic leader so she says what is empathy so i understand you know uh i i know what arnav wants for example for me that is empathy or where he wants to go in his career and how am i fulfilling that and so on you say it's no, it's never about the quantum of time you give it is a quality of the time you give makes sense yeah right of course it was in context to the time management problem statement but coming back to then again really seeing does the leader have empathy for her leaders hmm uh, for her team right and then it bubbles down because it's a recursive function that at each node of that tree the whoever is occupying that spot in the node yeah, yeah. right or or that particular node has to recursively re, you know it's it's a it's a classic tree algorithm you know, i'll go to computer science any day but then you are masked with sort of saying that what is the weight you know you can talk think of it as a weighted tree and then how you are moving things along at some point the weight of that particular node or let's say arnav has achieved what he wants and is ready for something else yeah so you know how are you able to move arnav to a different area of the graph where his weight can be better and and you know his his goals are further achieved makes sense so it's a constant process right and you want to do it at least on a quarterly basis if if at all if you can get into that rigor because it forces you to keep asking these questions and you know that there is an audit coming so you're like okay you know at the very least you get into that cadence right right but uh, very valuable i'll 
come to the actually same question from a bottom up side rather than a top down now and and this would be uh, up you know uh, asking for a lot of uh, you know young engineers getting started with their careers junior to mid level and and uh, i think we were talking just like before we were starting about like right. you know uh, like the focus of becoming man and the machine one as an engineer right. and you were talking about all of those things very passionately so so uh, what of advice for uh, junior engineers getting started what are the things you need to really focus on because uh, and i will tell you what what happens is like i uh, am teaching a lot of uh, folks like that only and uh, the problem is like there's a lot of content there's a lot of media for them also like there's a tidal wave of okay learn five languages five tech stack this is getting built that is getting built apply there so there's there's, there's a lot of thing to you know right in front of them and it's very difficult to sort of uh, you know focus on correct what you should do to to sort of grow as an engineer what are things you should focus on so any word of advice there it's a long uh, it's a very loaded question too many things in that yeah i think look top line is uh, you've got to you know it's not about how many languages you can code in hmm can you build yourself to a point where you can back yourself to you know implement be a certain way yeah. how are you building adaptability that that becomes an important part when you are uh, you know starting up it serves you in good stead even later in life hmm. in your career right that's the longevity bit because you know as you rise up uh, i was telling you that I, i spend a lot of my time with the finance and legal people hmm. now that's not something i learned in school yeah right but i back myself to say okay it's not that complex right i'll have, i'll have conversations with my legal team and they'll be like you know you're practically a lawyer at this point but you know teach yourself to read a contract get into the you know the why of it like in the, asking the the five whys as you were talking yeah. about very powerful technique yeah right like the so what is also thing like, okay okay so what if you delivered this right now these are like imperative questions that you can ask yourself to get sharper the uh, the one thing that's key and i think this is important for younger engineers also or or any depending on wherever you are in your career graph i tell this to my team as well that demand feedback a lot of times we say are my you know oh my manager is so busy i know you know they care about me but you know it's all right um i am i think i'm doing a great job you know i'm finishing my work on time and you know i i'm working you know my manager sees that i'm doing really hard you know that, you know contributing and so on but i think if in an environment where there isn't continuous feedback and we don't this is the demand but right you know uh, uh, some uh, you know one of my mentors told me something very powerful that uh you know he, he was talking about uh, his interaction with a doctor it's a cultural thing he was american and he told me that uh, you know he he was exp- he was telling me his interactions with his doctor and i said how the hell like how are you asking all these questions and you know he was he was describing a very candid conversation with his doctor he said i am paying for it yes i am the customer yes i am entitled to it and you know i, I was like yeah wow i never thought of it like that hmm right you know and you know culturally in in india you like oh, you go to any doctor here and how many doctors are giving you time of day right they're like ah, you know next i'm like no sorry dude i'm paying you for it i am entitled to the answer now you know take that same mentality which is basically owning your experience yeah. kind of di- picking this from this particular anecdote and really applying it to your career as well right are you a passenger or are you a driver you can be you know i can you know join numerous uh, i can i can watch a lot of content online i can watch a lot of blogs or read a lot of blogs watch a lot of videos and i can really upskill myself at the end of the day if you don't have that feedback that's telling you that what i'm doing directionally is taking me forward right right and this is again a you know i'm applying forward that to your career as well saying what is the end state you want to get at hmm. right is the end state that i want to make 2x of my own money or 2x of money what i'm making right and even there i tell my team all the time and and i and i will say this to every person out there that be selfish why are you work wherever you are working if you are not growing hmm. right the place is not giving you opportunity to grow then you know find somewhere else to work right 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 because the you know you may you may you know the easiest way to uh, raise your ctc is change many jobs but that's never going to take you far yeah right and i look at a lot of switches in uh, people's you know i'm like you know sometimes there are very good reasons of course right typically start up fail startups or you know it could be a variety of things those are good those are good failures and i want to know that but a lot of times it's like you know very opportunistic and i'm like no won't fit you know there is no longevity here you've never really built something yeah so 
but you build something also by investing in yourself to say that yeah i can grow my ctc by 3 lakh rupees if i switch every year now always say okay what if you stayed this year with me and made that a 10 lakh rupee jump what would you do hmm. right we were talking about how people are obsessed about money and ctc growth yeah because if you are actually trying to improve your valuation think of yourself as a startup no hmm you say what what is it that people would actually pay for why would they pay that additional 10 lakh rupees to me yes and if you actually work backwards on that and then think that you are on the customer you you have more directed conversations with your manager or whatever environment you are in yeah right a lot of time people say oh we do side hustles or whatever right even if even that needs to be a bit directional correct correct <laughs> even i think uh, that can be bra- broken down in a much better way i feel like the 2x etc also like sometimes i also uh have students uh, talk about the same direction like right. uh, don't think like how to get 2x cdc and short circuit that to okay i would take a company jump rather than that uh what kind of value can i deliver so that instead of earning 20 lakh somebody will pay me 40 lakhs then let's work backwards from what do i need to learn to deliver that value exactly and then work towards that yes and value then stream. everybody would be ready to pay you 40 lakhs yes. not just one company with so this particular company gives me 2x not like that no, absolutely and you know look the never money is important title is important right if again you know uh, very when we have conversations where we parted ways so people are like yeah i more power to you you know look i can't do that for you yeah. that's you're getting this somewhere absolutely i'm a cheerleader i want you to be happy right you want to spend a lot of time with working with me if you're going to be miserable let's not do that <laughs> yes yes but uh, you know the the uh, the thing again comes down to sort of uh, really saying that you know never underestimate the value of equity you have created some place exactly exactly you know and if if you're in an environment where you know i you know i'm like hey you know if if you've proven yourself and you know engineers will get restless right we have we have quarter life crises mid life crises take pick your quantum of crisis right at that point if you're in an environment where your organization is giving you the space yeah why not understand and also it's a financial thing right it is more expensive for an organization to replace you so that is leverage you you have that right not everybody will get it but yes if you are a performer in that organization stay there upskill you will get far more you know if you go anywhere else you're going to reset yourself rebuild the equity yeah and it's going to set you back actually from where you want to be of course of course right which is my push always so i always sort of say like think of yourself you know people talk about how you are the product right and packaging yourself thinking about yourself as a as a as as having value right yeah this is your and you know you can say that a socially uh, recognizable metric is the ctc right uh, unfortunately but you know there is also the soft value that you create in terms of sometimes you know i've had i've you know uh, the most learning i've had is when i've not been paid for months right yeah and yeah it was easy to switch and go some place else yeah but then that bond that you created then the learning that you had yeah. is special yes, right definitely. i mean you know i go back to my tiny old days and you know it was very easy you know one of very early on i you know i remember this clearly and I, I i went in front of the team this was literally i think my second week there if i'm not mistaken and i had all hands and i said look you know uh we have so much money we have so much runway everybody who wants to quit can leave now yeah but don't kill me with you know i don't want a death by thousand cuts the rest of you if you want to stay my only focus is to increase my runway one month at a time hmm. this is going to this may sink but one month runway extra every month we will try that yeah if you want to stay and fight with me please stay and fight Make a lot of engineers did and those to me that's a very special bunch right 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 it's very easy to shift out and you know it's you know taking yourself out of the game is the easiest thing you can do right 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 makes sense uh finally i have just a uh, few more questions which is around like uh like how does the future look like and i wanted to really talk about like uh, at hotstar also you have been uh, investing a lot into ai uh, right so i mean i get it that the recommendation engine home page uh, makes sense uh, but where else like you know uh, in, in your entire stack of the things uh, where else things like ai machine learning are sort of fitting in and looking into the future where else do you think it's uh, again working customer backwards today you know we are fortunate that we have such a big footprint in the indian industry even you know otherwise uh, 
you know we are in in uh, southeast asia in in, uh, in multiple regions where we are running our platform so we have a lot of customer love the 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 thing constantly is that how do you continue to stay relevant hmm. again technology with now whether it's ai ml most of it is ml anyway but you know uh, people uh, I, i don't want to throw buzzwords out there but really the customer problems we are trying to solve is that how do we create a differentiation why should you why should you watch or not yeah right that's a question to answer for me yeah. now you know there are several other platforms that have content on it right uh, so the customer doesn't have any loyalty and they shouldn't have any loyalty as such hmm. right you want to be entertained sometimes you want to watch a youtube sometimes you want to watch a prime and you know sometimes you watch a hotstar yeah so answering that question through technology right my focus is really on how do i use technology to amplify the value of what i am selling right right and if if i am selling uh, air <laughs> fundamentally how do i make improve the value of that air yeah right uh, i'm talking very abstractly but you know to get more right, out of take a remote turn on hotstar and delightful things happen right. yes so you know it could be uh, it could be any of those things that yeah. you're talking about and all of those things require a uh, technology mindset which is to say that you know do i know my customer well right you know talk about rex is the easiest thing to think about and you know people have been doing it for uh, a while recommendations right yeah. uh even there itself in terms of saying that you know we've invested a lot in sort of saying okay how can we create personalized layouts hmm. right maybe arnav likes it this way akash likes it that way uh right you know i know uh, my mom when she opens you know why who said that it should only be a tray based you know like the layout that we see today yeah right we just actually make our product inaccessible if you think about it right so how do you unlock the next level of consumption uh and a lot of those things come you know one of the very uh, i think i would say we pioneered this is uh, something that uh, you know we said we want our uh, you know the the content we produce we produce you know in many regional languages it's you know bharat is a is a thing for us yeah. it's always been for the the organization and uh, you know we started with a simple premise you know back in uh, when we were starting out our data showed us that english was the most dominant language on the platform hmm. which clearly is bogus <laughs> right so we said okay how do we solve this so that you know the content starts in the language that the customer prefers to consume in right right and i think we were the first people to really spend effort on ensuring right today if you see any content right you know go back now of course a lot of a lot of other players are doing it but you know all our content is is dubbed in the key languages or you know uh, the languages that our customers are asking for now it is in the top tray also a language uh, level selection is also available i think yeah you know when the watch app i have seen like that's right so when the watch experience begins yeah you you are immediately shown that hey you can watch this in the language you prefer and i know I was looking at your profile, and you speak uh, apparently uh, fluent Bengali and uh, some Odia yeah. apparently. But <laughs> maybe you want to watch something in Bangla, right? Or you know, I was watching yeah. RRN, and you know, I, you know, I want to watch in Telugu. Yeah, I will yeah, read yeah. the subtitles, right? Uh, or uh, Tamil. So the the meta is over there that again recognizing working from a customer backwards, and that took a lot of work in the back end to make happen. Yes, it took, and you know, it improved. You know, when you talk about ML or uh, AI or generally, you know, more signals are better. Sure. right and then sort of working your way backwards and of course now our data looks very different yeah <laughs> but think of it this way right like the 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 important thing is that again working using technology now you know even uh, thinking about you know you were talking about payment how can we make what sort of more transactional thing today today you think of it more uh, imperatively oh i have some free time i'll go here versus let's say uh, a swiggy right or uh, zomato uh, since uh, you are ex zomato you know zoman i guess uh, right so how do you decide that we all have our affinities to special uh, specific platforms yeah you instinctively you know you say oh i'm hungry so i think of this yeah right so how can you create a deeper relationship with the customer that comes from sort of you know recognizing that and having technology unlock it right and you know look you know technology changes so rapidly um so for me as a, a cto like i'm constantly sort of you know trying to question myself that how much some cost bias do i have <laughs> right you know yeah i needed to create something 3 years back because nobody you know no vendor could offer that yeah it's not my you know and again sort of having that clarity in what is your core business why are you here yeah and i'm not the, here the to yeah. recommendation is something i i personally also feel is very uh, important as a consumer i feel because uh, what happens is 
you know very frankly speaking behavior is like i have i have a tv i have got netflix prime yeah. hotstar even apple tv now yes all those are there you know, i've taken a you know plate of dinner sitting and i open one of those apps and and unless within let's say 30 seconds one minute i'm able to find something interesting and I don't, especially on a tv kind of a screen it's very hard to type yeah like if just by navigating up down left right i can Correct. find out something i like Correct. great if i don't i just press the back button and go into another app and maybe i can find something there i like and a lot of times what happens is that the content is there inside that app like i google search and okay it's already there in this only it's available on prime but it's not recommending it's available Correct. on netflix not recommending Correct. that happens but if i can you know get it immediately i would definitely spend my time on your product because i got it there it's so, uh, yeah it's it's amazing right you know i think uh, again for you know going back on uh, and I'm, i know i know my product team and engineering teams will applaud this but you know our product is used by multiple people in the household and actually not having profiles really you know we have so much content on the app yeah. it's always hurt us in the past so it, you know it but again go back to use cases and you know now, as we are it's coming soon right it's coming soon yeah, yeah. Uh, but the you know just the way the product is created Yeah. I I have to rethink it and you know this is where this is the fun at I think of working at Hotstar is that you have to really think of how is this going to work at scale. Yeah. Yeah. I can't just copy an experience that you know another competing platform has out there because oh let me just throw profiles in there. It's easy for me to do that. But the hard thing for us has been that how do we create an experience that works at scale for all types of our customers. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's where the beauty of sort of creating a product in india in general i think you know creators are our customers are so diverse and so different yeah it is it is mind blowing and i think that's the fun of going to work every day to sort of say how do you solve for this cohort yeah. oh okay this is you know and there's such spirited conversation you know we do the you know our our, our ux uh, team does a lot of customer uh, interviews and it's fascinating to look at that research you're like oh okay and this is counterintuitive i didn't think of that Yeah, you know, that's a conversation I've had with a friend of mine some time back. I remember because, uh, I mean, my Netflix has uh, my mom's profile as well, and those screens look very different. Yes. Like if I open my mom's screen, it's a whole different affair. Like there are Hindi, Bengali movies inside <laughs> it, and mine is a, a lot of you know documentaries and action movies, and it's, it's very different. And then even the layouts and all, I think Netflix has been doing a little different for different profiles. Yes. And I was talking to my friend like if somebody like Hotstar does it. it has to be not just about you know recorded content but also has to be the live stuff because if it is my profile it would have a lot of football and f1 content if it's my dad's profile it will have cricket at the top so the yeah. difference has to reflect across all the content correct correct and and you know uh, people always say that oh you compete with you know netflix or amazon prime or you know whatever and i i said actually we are competing with television yeah yeah uh you know the the product you know uh, at some point we used to have news which uh, we don't have anymore but literally the product has so many things in it and the variety you know i would say there isn't any i would wager as probably no other ott platform in the world that has the variety of content we have on the platform today right 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 because there are niche over time you of know course. there is we we've, we've really leveraged that aggregated uh, strategy to our benefit and you know that's what our customers want Right. Uh, right. Whether it is content created by star, uh, you know, episodic stuff like Anupama, it's so like it's amazing, you know, to watch this. Like there is such a loyal cohort every day, right? I you know the, we used to, I used to joke and say that on a boring afternoon, I have maybe two million people on the platform. Right. So uh, you know that's I we are, we are blessed. You know I, I count my blessings and uh, it, it's a responsibility, right? I, I it, for us it is how do we create a effective megaphone to tell the stories that our creators are are saying right and not just that how do you take the product that is being created which is the stories right. and actually amplify the value of that through tech right 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 so those are the things that you know i worry about you right. know what's next to your future question another question i have on on that uh, you know uh, sort of uh, what you do with making sense of the data side of the things is and and uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i think that uh, like the pandemic had definitely been a major shift in uh, sort of what does work in a multiplex anymore and what does not yeah. right because and then you have i think what what's it called a hotstar cineplex hotstar multiplex multiplex it's called multiplex, multiplex. yes yeah. so so now there are movies that released on that during pandemic time but i'm thinking going ahead there will be obviously a lot more movies that will release right on on digital screens directly rather than uh, big halls uh, right 
the the uh, sort of business attribution of that is obviously has to be very different because there you know how many people came to watch that movie ticket sales box office numbers and that's a very traditional 100 year old way of attributing success of a movie sure and now it has to got to be very data based right i mean how many people started watching the movie how many people watched the entirety of absolutely it and, right it's a channel right the digital yeah. channel or whether it is advertising or it is uh, consuming like this yeah. you have far more information about how customers perceive your uh, your product and uh, absolutely i think you know when we uh it is an avenue certainly right uh, for any content creator to take in terms of uh, you know where they want to distribute it and there isn't a one size fits all or hey this is better than that i think there is a lot of uh, you know again i think it's sort of going back to you know there's no point in in holy wars right like there are horses for courses right and you decide what is the best way to do but yeah you're right i think there is more you know when we work with our creators we do think about we do have information about well who's watching it yeah how much are they watching where are they coming from and it's far more richer for them yeah uh, right uh, you know i think netflix obsesses about this and i think they uh, you know we we you, you can use that and and you know it's interesting because in a way also talk about how uh, collaborative filtering will only bubble up it will essentially reduce your sampling uh, completely yeah which i hate right like in this is where people are hacking and saying let me create a fresh profile so that i get you know and a judgment free i actually have discovery yeah discovery has been killed now because you know everyone wants to watch a thing and then that just bubbles up to the top and then everyone's watching you know, like, oh, have you seen that yeah. yes oh, i've already seen that but yeah no one's it's uh, you just create this echo chambers yeah but fundamentally i think going back yeah absolutely i think uh, even sort of pivoting to that we're talking about technology right uh, during the pandemic we had no choice but to completely you know and we fell back on our ops to make sure that we were able to run these live crazy live events from home hmm. we had to uh, you know the the decision to do multiplex also was hey there there is this opportunity what can we do how quickly can we turn around and you know create that on platform so i think again as as technologists the the point of it is that as technologists having that nimbleness to keep up with your business i think that becomes very important yeah 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 uh, right and the sort of going back to our earlier conversation about being customer first and then saying you know what becomes important right at that time it's okay right like you you want to sort of spar with your business and unleash that um, the time to market matters right 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 and and uh, i think just one final question is like next i would say few years next five years where do you see like this particular domain like media content digital where do you think see things moving uh yeah i mean not a fortune teller but uh, look i am i i will double down and say that you know the experiences will become more important hmm. why why do you watch something on ott versus going to a movie theater versus why would you prefer one ott platform over the other um, right so i think creating that differentiation uh, will be material uh, right i don't claim to see if i don't i don't i don't want to even look 5 years ahead 5 years is a very long time yeah. right even if i look in the next one or two years uh, you know we've got 5g coming that yeah. will materially change the landscape and will open a brand new cohort uh, right yeah. then you know for people who are already uh, you know it, it, digital doesn't have to be a one way street hmm. right uh, today it is yeah because we are still at the v1 of it which is to say that oh you know uh, wait i can send this through a sat and i can send it from the internet as well okay cool so it just you know you have to stop looking at the distribution channel alone and say that you know how do you create uh a transactional relationship with your customer right ultimately mm-hmm. and that's the holy grail of you know what in a, everybody would, would love a very strong transactional engine right and you win at zomato and i think that was a yeah. key thing how do you monetize you don't have a transaction engine which is where they had to get to to you know get there but leveraging that that te- technique is important and how do you apply that to different domains digital is no different right uh, to do that but yeah makes sense makes sense why why the why should the customer use your platform you can constantly ask that question yeah right like uh, the the simple thing is you know it's muscle memory uh, you know a long time back uh, you know i had to coach myself to say i will always you know use my product first so that you know in in the beginning when i started using the product became a big thing and once i start now you know like my family tells me you're just like a you know hotstar uh, spokesperson because i'm like yeah man i i only watch hotstar 
<laughs> there's so much stuff on it right yeah. uh but yeah it, it's not obvious uh, you know it, it's about you know one is to sort of coach yourself which is the technique that i adopted and said you know i want to see you be a customer to my product as well which is yeah. the first thing i want to be always otherwise i won't have customer obsession and the second is that okay in the absence of that self motivation how do you create a reason right like why should why is arnav not fundamentally reaching for hotstar or you know replace customer there as a first thing so if you know that you are going to get a variable reward or a differentiated experience those are at least starting points in my book makes sense yeah awesome awesome i think uh thanks for you know answering i think a varied set of questions across a lot of things sure. uh, but but i think uh, lots of these would be questions in, in the mind of our viewers and then uh thanks for thanks for answering all of them and thank you a lot for taking out your time absolutely my pleasure thank you for having me it was a good chat thank you <laughs> cheers okay.